Like you've won World Cup overalls as well. Yeah. But you seem to have really figured that one out. While I would be a little bit lower, like nationals, okay, I get fifth. But then on World Champs, my in entire body <laughs> knows it's now. Oh, carry huge speed on that hip. Goes massive. Oh. I don't know if I like the guy. Should I speak like this? Yeah, yeah, like that's better. <laughs> because, like, uh, we talk. Yeah, 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 okay. just go. I've always been, like, bigger of a Tomac fan. Yeah. And then this year, like, he's always there, you know. It's a bit of a <laughs> annoying, always coming back at the end of the race. I Somehow, I don't like him. <laughs> but everybody said he's the nicest of all. Yeah, he's such a nice dude. And then I was like, okay, maybe. And then when he talks, he's actually pretty nice and interesting. Yeah. Compared to some of the other guys, actually. So I was like, okay. I started to like him more, so that was cool. <laughs> that's uh, that's one of the best things about the podcast, though, is I feel like I put up a clip the other day saying it where it's like, I think that if you just sit down one-on-one -on -one and talk for three hours with someone, like if you get locked in an elevator for three hours with a person and all you can do, like, let's say you remove the stress from the situation, so yeah. like you're not gonna have any stress if someone's like okay in three hours we'll get you out so you can just sit and chill you're probably gonna like that person that's true no matter what you know but it's we never do this like we never just sit and talk with no phone for three I hours i fully agree yeah but also it's normal mm. why would you have a bad conversation only when you talk with like random things and not have because what makes us stand out from each other is also like Difference. the stress yeah the context yeah. all of that and then that's also what makes other guys cooler than others i think yeah so that's why like webb when he was racing when he's racing is kind of a like a piece of shit i don't know but it's like a, <laughs> like a dog you know yeah, like yeah, yeah. Dog. yeah. so I, do, I wouldn't like to be his rival no but at the same time when he's not racing it seems like mega chill yeah then because Tomac, I I know him a little you bit. You have been a Tomac <laughs> fan forever, <laughs> I know, dude. Forever. I know. I know. I don't know why. I've always liked the guy. He's always like opening the throttle full and then... Yeah. He's yeah. not the best style, but he's just impressive. Yeah. But like Sam Hill, like yeah. you said. Well, that, it's funny, right? So let's... let's uh, your style on a bike is the complete opposite of Tomac. <laughs> Like, you are finesse. You are French fine wine when you ride you a bike. Think? You don't think? I don't... Like, it's... I'm super You're not bad like Tomac. I wish I was. I feel like Amori is more like Tomac, one of my biggest rivals. Yeah, okay. But for sure, I'm not as impressive and all out like he can be. Yeah. So, it's funny that you like... It's... Maybe you like him so much because that's what you wish you could have on a bike. Probably. And I... <laughs> Like, I wish I could change my riding style and stuff because I'm not a big fan. It, you always kind of yeah. hard on yourself, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I wish I had a different style, but it is what it is. So, what, you you would rather have, like, the just smash your way down the hill style? I would just like to look a little bit more impressive because when I ride, it looks like I'm chilling, to be honest. Like, yeah, even that's, sometimes, that, but that's impressive. No. <laughs> not to <laughs> you? Because when I ride, I feel like I'm pushing the limit and stuff. But when I see myself afterwards, like the replay or something, I'm like, what, what, what am I doing? doing? <laughs> like it looks, compared to the others, I look 85%, you know, which I'm not. But which is a little bit boring for me because I look like I'm chilling. Yeah. It, who's the Cooper Webb in downhill in terms of like the mind games and the mental, like that dog? Who's that guy? Honestly, there is a new gener generation that has a little bit less of that mind games mm. so right now the first guy that came to my mind was Mina which is like the old the goat you know the that's my generation yeah it's like 40 over 40 now but still races and which is crazy to me to me too still the man it pisses me off because he shouldn't be able to do that yeah. at that age and he still like beats us and stuff so I'm like what the hell is happening but he's always trying to tell you something a little bit out there 
to trigger you and in some moments like he's a, is he sneaky yeah. like I love him but he's really sneaky <laughs> give me an example like for example when you do like track walk or the day before finals he will make like look at you for like he will be there around you and be like why are you looking at this line man he'll be like <laughs> this is where I'm going really you know he's like yeah. making you doubt he's taking the exact same line <laughs> but he's sure. making you doubt about your line because he just wants you to lose like ground of what's real what's not and all my life he's been like this because when I arrived he was like at his peak he was maybe like 30 something yeah and I was my first year in junior I was already like doing some good results and stuff and he was super nice to me like welcome so nice to see you do well blah 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 but always had a sneaky word at the end to make me like ah and I've always been weak at this you know like, <laughs> and I'm a good do you know Antoine Mill? no he's a enduro moto guy from France like okay world champion like legend too I should know him and he always took me under his wing and being like he wanted me to be tougher mentally so he always like gave me advices because he thought I was too soft and stuff but in the end I like being like that because it makes me also uh authentic kind yeah, of yeah i don't play so much games yeah i would sometimes for fun i would be like i remember one time I, I was a bit of a dick honestly because we were like at the last race there was two rounds that week in the u.s in snowshoe oh yeah was this last year it was 21 okay yeah, 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 yeah. and i was third overall loris was second my best friend from the paddock and then thibault was first overall and he was like second year elite never been in that position he was maybe able to clinch the overall like it was sketchy and then after the first race he crashed both qualifying and finals and he was at the podium because he was still leading and I told him no I, I was with Loris I was like and he was just behind and I told him a little bit loud wow Thibaut is fully cracking under pressure we should go <laughs> for it bro. and he was there and he listened to me he was like what the fuck I was like yeah bro you're cracking it's good for us <laughs> and he fully cracked more from there and then <laughs> I won the overall so that was a bit of a I didn't really plan the move yeah, but yeah. it worked that's and, hectic and it's not nice but hey it worked yeah, and, dude. and he's young so he can probably he, win he can win future. more yeah but I was a bit like not proud I don't like to play games but that would be the toughest lesson for him to learn but you may have done him the biggest favor in his entire career I hope so. I hope he learned from it and he will probably be in that situation again at some point because he's so good. But on the moment, I think he didn't appreciate so much. No, of course not. <laughs> but, but but you're not there to be friends. No, 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 that's true. And Greg, Greg didn't show you much uh, much. And love. it is like the jungle out there, you know? So For sometimes real. it's it's legal yeah. and it's yeah, either you it was strong enough mentally, either not. And this time I took advantage, advantage of that. But... I didn't do it like fully intentionally you know? yeah 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 I was a little bit like kidding and stuff but in the end when I remembered after I won the overall the race in the overall I was like fuck I actually <laughs> didn't really help I him buried <laughs> this dude <laughs> a little bit oh that's so you, so you like even going into the last few races you didn't even remember that you'd sort of said it like it was no. just an off no, no, no. thing I remembered after because he actually got hurt oh uh, yeah so I'm not proud of it that's why I was <laughs> telling you, man. but I remember I was like wow it was not easy on him you know yeah. and he he's like he knew it was gonna be tough because if, if it wasn't me it was Loris like Loris was so close to him point wise yeah yeah and yeah it was it was gonna be tough anyways but I love it yeah it's cool but I mean that's that's probably a, a heavy lesson for him to learn but like that sort of stuff when you when you face like I mean, you probably had some like adversity in the start of your career, you know, like sometimes Still. you need those, those things to get yeah. you to those next levels. And it's a good test for him. And if he has, if it's not me, but another guy in the future, he probably will remember yeah, that moment yeah. and be like, okay, what did I do wrong five years ago or something? And yeah. then maybe it will be like, yeah, thank you for preparing me for that I don't think he will but yeah. maybe have you and spoke to him much since? yeah 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 Yeah. like we are the same from the same country yeah so we see each other and he's, he's all good he's not like 
holding any yeah like uh sourness or hey, at the end of the day it was him behind the handlebars right yeah 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 like i didn't push him down or anything yeah like yeah that, yeah so. no there's no takeouts in downhill no that's that's right that's why we actually the only thing we can do is mind games because yeah. on the track pff, you're the only one that can do your own fate or whatever yeah so it's pretty nice and that's also why i think we are all pretty good friends yeah yeah compared to moto where it seems a bit more hectic because it's a contact sport yeah like they're I fighting each other i understand like yeah. i would hate the other guys too if i was doing moto but i also think that's why moto is so cool because yeah it brings that small battle sometimes when you see two guys going at it it's pretty cool yeah because like rivalries make sports so special yeah and I it's agree. it's different like there's rivalries in what you do but it's so different to being on the same patch of dirt at the exact same time with your elbows out yeah. and or you know sitting next to each other on the start line and it, it, there's so many it's so different even though did the level like i have to say the level of downhill mountain biking right now is full-blown retarded yeah like i actually can't believe how fast you dudes can go so as far as like the respect uh, f from an athlete standpoint then downhill motor like savages all of you guys are just <laughs> savages but yeah i think maybe that's one of the reasons why you can be so like passionate about moto and supercross is because like there's legitimate head-to-head -head rivalries yeah and i don't know why but all of us right like downhill guys we love, love moto yeah we love moto it's like kind of what we would have all dreamed yeah. to do. Yeah. Dreamed to do. So we were like, oh, what about it? And we ride moto for fun or training and stuff. So we kind of have the feeling of what it is. But it's like, for us, the number one thing we follow and we love it. I never knew. That was one of the most surprising things about starting the podcast. Is I would just, as it started to get like a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, I'd be like, I follow from this guy, I follow from this guy, I follow from this guy. From, and then I'm like looking, thinking, man, it's like the entire top 15 of the world downhill mountain biking championship is fully into the podcast. Yeah, because then, they love moto yeah, so much. Yeah, and, and I just, I didn't know that it was like that. And the coolest part for me was like downhill was where I started. True. And so to kind of come full circle like we were just talking before about like cedric and and like sam hill dude i go and i stay at sam hill's house in perth with him now like when i raced manjim up in his hometown in june last year raced his bike he just no way. yeah yeah so it's so crazy to me that yeah i was like a 12 13 14 15 year old kid pushing an intense m1 up a hill i used to spend every single day building downhill tracks no way <laughs> my that's entire sick. high school bro it's all i did but that's mega like you can without being pro downhill or pro moto you still end up close to these guys and get to know them and it's so cool yeah it's a it's a trip but i just i guess i never knew the crossover for the the downhill guys and bro some of the downhill boys rip on a dirt bike i know like fully rip on a dirt bike yeah Actually, some of the guys. So Gwyn used to be a amateur, yep. amateur, yep. amateur. How do you say? Amateur. Amateur. Yeah. <laughs> Racer. You had it pretty right. And some other guys like do camps with Jeffy Mig. Like they ride really well. Yeah. I wish I was in this category of people. <laughs> like I've <laughs> never understood how the motor was working. It was so d it's so close but so different at the same time. Yeah. And I never had the reflexes. The. But have you? Yeah. Have you, you haven't spent much time on them, have you? No. Yeah, it's like just I've never time. spent so much time. Yeah. And every time I'm not taking so much risk, you know? Yeah. I'm like just having fun. Yeah. I'm not trying things or like yeah. doing anything to progress so much. It's crazy though. So Dean Lucas spent a bunch of time with us in... He actually moved up to the Gold Coast, like where I was living. And uh, have you spent much time with Dean? Well, I know him f since From, his yeah. first years, dude. but I've never like went to Australia. And One of the coolest motherfuckers. Yeah, he's like he's good. a cool dude. And uh, so he bought a bike. He's always rode, but he bought a new CRF 250 this year. Okay. And when we, he came and did the first ride on it, I would have been faster than him easy. And then maybe 
four, five rides, he was smoking me, bro. No way. So Actually? like, yeah, but he was putting in like legit time. Okay. Like he was riding a lot, like really, you know, putting in effort. So for you, I just think it'd be a matter of just getting a chance to put in some legit time on I a proper hope. bike. I hope it would be, but For sure, I would dude. need someone to tell me because I'm doing everything wrong pretty much. Position, yeah, yeah, yeah. gas, gear, everything is wrong. Yeah. So I'll need some work, but I love it. That's cool. Like every time I go, I feel like there's a crossover also training wise. We have the For sure. endurance yeah. that we don't have in downhill. For example, I did like three days of testing and it, 25 runs times three minutes. In the end, on three days, it's nothing. Yeah. When you can do a whole day moto, you can do two you hours. You could do that in three. It, you could do that in one. One moto. And it's uh, like to do those three minutes, it's like three minutes and then up to the top, three yeah. minutes, up to the top, three minutes. So it's so different. Like yeah. that's why Dean was, because he struggles with his hands. He gets like on downhill. Like yeah. he has, he'll say that by the end of a downhill run, like a World Cup run, like he can't feel the handlebars. Yeah, yeah. So he's got big like time big time arm pump. So that's why he wanted to start riding so that he could like just get crazy arm pump. And, and But it's different though. Like I get, It is different. Yeah, though. like it's specifically different than when I ride moto. I can be riding downhill with no arm pump yeah. and then do two laps and be rock hard yeah. for arms. Yeah. Because it's just like so different. You get pulled a lot from the moto. Yeah. And in downhill, it's the opposite. Like you get a lot of weight on like from the so you're pushing away yeah yeah from the ground bah, bah. so it's fully different and i think it might help in a way yeah but it's so different and i like i'm unable to ride moto with no arm pump it's impossible i do like 10 minutes and because i don't ride enough maybe too well so have you have you ever had any coaching for moto, moto no tomorrow i'll help you out with some stuff like obviously i'm not the fucking fastest dude in the world but i've had a lot of fast people tell me what to do okay so i can copy paste <laughs> and see what you can do with the info Get but like that. you shouldn't be getting arm pump on a moto and it's it's you you just won't be using your legs so this is the biggest difference between downhill and moto right so even there's a friend of mine that i ride with in dubai and he used to do he was like a bmx mountain bike cyclist kind of guy and he rips like rides really good but when he tries to wheelie stuff his like legs come out because that's what you do when you're like manualing on a pushy yeah but then on a bike so you need to be like toes in knees in and like there's I, there's like my rule or like my the thing that i like trying ever to break is that you never have your kneecap further than the front arch of your foot on the bike okay and then so it'd, it'd be like the same position that you're trying to get in on the mountain bike but there's like a different kind of way to get to it so if you you want to be on your toes toes in knees back and never let your knee go forward and then you just like flex at your hip and like lay your back or like your chest kind of flat and then you're in that position and then that will put weight over the back like low down over the back and then your head comes forward and you'll your center of gravity will be like way lower on the bike so that movement back and forward the acceleration it won't affect your arms as much like you'll just be like okay. locked into that position and then you can like let go of your elbows makes no sense to me to for example to do that that that's so different know. to what yeah. you would be that what you would think right and on a downhill bike like you can't grip with your knees no so you it's don't all have to. in your feet yeah you don't have, and you should leave your bike free yeah, because yeah. it has to move a little bit. Yeah. So it's fully, and you can see, you, you'll see me tomorrow if you know, you know I'm a mountain biker when I ride the motor. It just looks We'll change so you completely tomorrow. Okay. But you, like, so you never want the bike to be free okay. on a, on a moto. That's like the, op you want your, there should be, like, you shouldn't even be able to put a business card between your boots and your bike ever. Really? Yeah. I'm not doing that so that's what I mean and but okay. as soon as you figure as soon as you that little part of it clicked of like the way that you need to hold on to the bike it would completely change your riding experience but people told me that before about the knees and stuff but I've never been able to do it like never what why like I, it doesn't make sense to me oh we'll figure it out tomorrow okay <laughs> well, yeah, maybe I need to focus on the position but then I'm gonna go slow I yeah. don't know we'll see yeah I think you'll be right You'll be sweet. When was the first time you rode? Like, when did you start riding? Uh, when I was 19. Yeah. 
I because my dad used to ride a lot of enduro moto. Yeah. Like championships in France, like things like this. But he would never really wanted me to ride to have a moto. So when I got some money from the bonuses, yeah, I bought one, and then I started to ride a little bit. But what was your first bike? Uh, KTM one two five. Okay. Yeah, pretty sick one. Yeah. It was. Uh, That's a good year too to ride. Yeah, and it was like super hard as the first moto. I didn't really know, you know, like two strokes. It's you need to be good at using uh, the engine and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like lost. But at the same time, it kind of helped me a little bit. And when I got the four stroke, like 250 CRF, like yeah. two years later, it was like kind of the right steps, let's say. It was kind of good. So what, what year did we meet? 2013, you said? No, we met in 16. 16. Or 15. So you hadn't really started riding that much then. Because no, I, no. I remember you did that trip. You met Tomac. I yeah, remember then it was you were, 16. You were frothing about that. Yeah. And uh, and you like got to ride at parlor or something. Yeah. So like that, you never had your own bike. Like that was just you getting to because it was through One Industries, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I was so I think when I met you, it was my first year at Specialized. Like, or was I late? No, nah, you were La Pierre was still. Lapierre. Yeah. Then it was. I have this crazy footage 15. of you. Remember, I was yeah, filming yeah, on yeah. that that slow motion camera. Yeah, it was like a small spot behind yeah. the office or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it was fifteen. Yeah. Then I think some guys from 100% yeah. presented me to uh, introduce, introduce uh, me to Tomac. I was 100% not one industry. Yeah. yeah. And then I met Tomac and I was like, oh my God. But then I, at the time I, I had a model for like two years yeah. and I pff, barely rode. Yeah, right. But yes. then Pala, like you go to Pala, yeah. it's like going to Dorno in, in Italy. Yeah. It's kind yeah. of like, wow, you can open the throttle like a fourth, fifth, like it's nice. Yeah. But then when I moved to Spain, for example, all the tracks are kind of ticky, yeah. not so good grip, sketchy jumps, and then it's all a different world. You need to actually be good technically to be riding around fast. Yeah. Because Pala, well, there's Pala and Pala. Yeah, you go yeah. to vet track, yeah. it's really easy. And when you go to the pro track and then there's the good guys riding, it's another level. Yeah. But it's still like safe in, in a way. Yeah. And Dono is the same. That's yeah. why I rode the most when I was a kid. Like a kid, young. Yeah. Then it was like, what gems, gems. But then when you actually ride like sit, ju- sit bound stuff, it's impossible for me. Like still hard at the moment. Yeah, I think the track's good tomorrow. Have you ever yeah. rode this track? Yeah, I've been there actually. Okay, that uh, track's good. There's yeah. some good places on there as well. Yeah. Like it's not. But too it's pretty hard. Like like it's hard pack. No, it's really good dirt and stuff, but it's technical. Yeah. Like yeah. the gems, there's like some step ups. Pretty like you need to go for it like. Hard ruts, yeah. Like it's not easy. Yeah. Have you, what do you think of the stock when you rode it? Was it easier than a normal bike for you? So I st- I tried the 450 Kawasaki yeah. before. Like yeah. uh, Tortelli was there and he was like, "Yo, ride the 450 first to see the track and stuff." Then I rode. It was like obviously pretty good. Like sick. I never rode a 450 before. I was like, "Whoa, yeah. insane!" <laughs> yeah, and let's then, go. And then they gave me the stock. And at first I was like, oh fuck, is it normal? I don't know, something was off. And then I, and they were like making me a joke. They only gave me like 15% of the power or something. Uh. <laughs> and I was like, ah, okay. And then they put me like the max or whatever, like the equivalent of the 450. And it was, I swear the same, mm. like the same feeling. I've never tried, a, cause I tried the free ride, the Suron, like all those stuff. Yeah, they're not the same thing. It's not a moto. It's no. not a moto. This no. one was actually a moto, but th- there was so much weird no- new noises, like the chain. You could hear the tire The move. tires. Yeah. I thought I had two flat tires yeah. when I first went like, out. Like, it's super weird, and there was not much engine brake, so that was a bit hard for me to get used to. And there was the brake, uh, the foot brake, yeah. which for me, I would instantly put... Yeah, two brakes on yeah. the, on the I wonder if they'll have them there tomorrow because that's what I like. I like the mountain bike. Really? Break. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, me too. It's kind of like well, of feeling course. at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the bike was insane. I had like straight away the good feeling. I jumped all the jumps. I was like, wow. And then yeah, they they had to test it more, so I just left. I just tried it for like maybe four or five laps. Yeah. But I actually believed in the project once I rode it. Yeah. Before you always like ah whatever you it's hard to believe that it can be as good as a real motor and stuff and then when I wrote it I was like okay where's the 
the website <laughs> yeah. get oh, one. did you get one no i have a friend who got two so yeah. i asked to get one for me oh sick like he paid like the, the account, deposit. deposit yeah 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 so i was like can i have one he was like, yeah dude that's sick well, but I, think, I don't know when they'll come out because they i think it was supposed to be this year or something yeah yeah maybe it's yeah. next year i don't know no i think they're getting pretty close i okay. was in the factory the other day okay so yeah. they were showing me yeah did you like, see some stuff yeah there's heaps of bikes okay yeah so they're like but so they were saying i don't know how much of this i can say i might have to delete this part but if i do i will but so they've obviously like they're obviously late on certain deliveries like okay. i think the i think the first delivery date was like a month ago or something so they okay. like missed it but they were saying that they're right now they're in the process of they build the same bike 18 times in one day so they're like they're trying to get the process so dialed in okay. i think it's like 14 minutes it takes to like assemble a bike and so they're like Pretty. yeah yeah so they've got like the production line that's they were doing it while i was there but they've got like the production line and it's like one torque wrench with these different heads on it and then it's like it's all in order it's just like this and it goes to the torque spec and just like, like, every, just IKEA, like full, <laughs> yeah 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 full <laughs> production line so i think that's what's taking the time and so they're like they build a bike record the time record the whole deal and then tear it down build it up and just do it over and over and over and over and then they've got um they've got like the crew so there's like a bunch of test riders and just all day every day they're just like doing product testing right now and like the performance testing on the batteries and and then just like then that goes to the software guys and then they take the data and then they're just like optimizing the code on the software so yeah they're just like fully balls it. it's crazy eh? Sick. there's a lot of people that are doubting the whole project okay but yeah i was at the start too and then i think it's legit because it looks like something like um an ideal that's not ready yet with yeah, electric yeah. things you never really know yeah but then I, they, I took like good develop like development riders yeah i think the few guys mechanics and stuff they've been working like at the gps like they know what they're doing yeah yeah and for me now it's like it has a lot of credit and i feel like it'll be pretty good like i don't know what other other brands gonna reply with because they have probably also some stuff in the tubes yeah like honda like all the other manufacturers but if they can be the first ones yeah it's kind of a big big deal like a tesla exactly same shit like kind of be the reference and then everybody kind of starts and then the other ones have to aim for that. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. But at the same time, I was against it a bit at the start because I love the noise. You know, it's like yeah, super like thrilling and stuff. But then there's so many tracks that closed yeah. around. And Especially in, in Europe. Especially in Europe, man. Because there's so much houses. It's so small and tight. Yeah, and people are living everywhere, to be honest. Like there's people you want to be kind of close to a city because you don't want to be two hours away from everything because yeah. no one will go but everybody complains about the noise but this might be insane for that like yeah. track reopening and stuff that's cool yeah well so i think tomorrow like we get so what the i came in may last year and rode but i only got to ride probably like four 12 minute sessions okay. so it wasn't like i got to ride a bunch on it but it it was it like fucking blew my brain basically and like i was so much faster i was like the rider i wished i could be <laughs> really? on a on a on a real bike you know okay. on like a dirt bike and then i went home pretty depressed that i like <laughs> couldn't cuz i rode so good it was almost like i got a, a glimpse of like <laughs> my what potential <laughs> <laughs> and then i had to go home and fucking suck again and uh but then to be fair i kind of i feel like i've slowly got my i've got my head back in the in the the dirt bike game of like riding petrol and like yeah i think i'm i think i'm back in love with it okay. but i'm excited to spend i get to ride all week so like i'll ride with you tomorrow and then I'll, i get to ride like wednesday thursday friday saturday no way yeah i'm just gonna ride same track or a different track I th- I'd like to go to a different track. I think they said that I can. Um, I'm going to hit up Jack Miller and see if okay. he's like going to ride it all um, this week because he knows like a bunch of tracks. But other, other than that, I'll just stay and ride. I'm just so keen to like because I guess still like I don't know how long the battery will last. I don't know. Yeah, that's actually like, that a big question mark for me too. Like, is it actually good with one battery for? to a have day. an half and yeah. day or yeah. do you need to recharge or whatever have you seen the stand 
No. So they got a stand that's a battery. And so mean? like, so you come in from your ride and you lift the bike on the stand and then a cord comes out and then you plug it into your bike. And so you charge while you're not riding it. No way. Yeah. Like yeah. it's the stand is a charger then. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So it's like, Sick. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they I got, didn't see that. but yeah, so I'll, uh, I'm interested tomorrow cause I haven't rode it since, since like that first time. Then yeah, hopefully we have some upgrades. It'll be good. So when was the first time you started like supporting Supercross and motocross? Like being a fan, fan unit. yeah. Um, was it like the first series, Supercross series you watched? So you I was always like, a big fan of Travis Pastrana, yeah, when I was a kid, yeah, like the Nitro Circus, yeah, looking low and like all those stuff, you know, like the yeah. DVDs. I had every time at Christmas, I had the new one, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so there was some like Stewart, Reed, Battles, Carmichael, like 06, maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was maybe the end of Carmichael, yeah, I think. But the first guy I remember being fan of was uh, Vilo Poto yeah like loved uh, it's, it reminds me a bit of Tomac in a way because yeah, it's like yeah. head down but Vilo Poto was like my first like what the fuck I want to be like this guy yeah. and then so that was maybe 209 or something and then yeah I would say when I was 14, 15 yeah and you just and I loved it because I could never do it yeah but I thought I could he was super close to downhill so I was like yeah I could do that like it was something I I was uh, personalizing myself in yeah, you know yeah, yeah. and it was like actually next level and I remember going to my, my friend Loris he's also a racer like really good guy Virgil. Like, super fun. yeah Virgil yeah, yeah. he was in the team at the time we met yeah and we would watch like the day after on YouTube like the, the replays like the main event it was super sick and so you were you a fan then of downhill and downhillers as well or were yeah. you like more of a fan of moto or you were just like kind of a fan of everything i'm kind i was kind of a fan of everything but mountain bike was what i was doing i knew some of the guys because two of the big names were also from nice where i'm from so i had the Who opportunity Nicolas Vuillos, yeah, which Villiers. is like 10 yeah. time world champion, yeah. like yeah. Yeah. the yeah. old days, but still. Yeah. And Barrel, Fabien Barrel. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they were like. Dude, he. French dudes fucking rip downhill. I, I haven't know. thought about Fabien Barrel in a long time. He had crazy good style. You think? So many people hated his style. But so, like, technical and yeah, it was, smooth. For and me, like, it, was, it was like the reference you know but uh, that makes I, sense when i grew up like they were like oh yeah no he looked like Barrel, and he was kind of a why didn't people like his style i don't know because he was a character like he had his own way to do things and actually i respect that a lot like he always had different approach yeah. and trying to do things different working like fitting him not necessarily what was fitting the others yeah and the others really hated that huh. like the anglo-saxons like the uh, the Minars you know they always made fun of him yeah and he never let it touch him he was always like fuck it I that's do what cool I want. so I really like that but because of that he didn't make so many friends yeah yeah I think. yeah so like when I arrived in juniors in 11 the reputation of the French was not so good yeah yeah know? yeah I'm Australian so like I, <laughs> all the Australian riders would hate the French yeah, dudes I know. <laughs> and I was like what the fuck why like because well, Vulios was like still skin suits and like doing that shit while there was like Sam Hill Chris Kavarik Nathan yeah. Rennie Michael Ronning like those boys were just like so and then you had like Sean Palmer so yeah. that there was there was an error in downhill that was so <laughs> was a clash. split down yeah. the middle you know like punk rock versus versus fucking classical music you know I know and like the French were like the last dudes that were <laughs> holding on but, but they didn't give a fuck the skin suit was faster exactly that, that's what I kind of respect I I kind of take both yeah. parties you know I like both uh, yeah. mindsets yeah. but I also respect the fact that they didn't really care about what uh, Sean Palmer was saying yeah. because he came as the cool kid he was like a rock star doing snowboard like skateboard X games whatever you know he was like you couldn't be cooler than Sean Palmer never but they were like fuck it I don't want to be like this guy I want to be like me yeah. and then Palmer hated that because he they were beating him and he was trying everything to be cool but then at and the end of the day and he would never wear a skin suit yeah, to and get at the end of the time, day he was yeah. being second he would win once in a while but he was second to these guys yeah 
so he fucking hated it and and for me like Barrel and stuff I'm like massive respect right now me I would be so weak mentally like I'll be like yeah fuck it I'll, yeah, I'll switch change. so everybody yeah. stop breaking my balls and I'm cool yeah, too yeah, yeah, yeah. and at the end of the day I, they did so well in their career they won so many races and stuff and doesn't matter if they were stylish or not they did it so and Samuel was wearing skin suit too man he for was a for time. a while huh? Yeah. I remember at world champs he would for sure it was like if you want to win at some point you should take everything that can help and yeah even though he was rocking the skin suit maybe better than some others yeah yeah, was still in skin suit. yeah dude i completely forgot about that but i've got now i've got flashbacks of him wearing the the aussie skin suit with like the black pants on the on world championships yeah for sure are you glad that went away no i fucking miss skin suits really yeah <laughs> actually like for just for world champs it would be like you know the once a year yeah. race that everything goes into performance because yeah you have the rainbow jersey and everything at the end and i wish it was still like a federation thing like okay you need to put like the french skin suit or if you canadian canadian skin suit like just because of the the stake of it you know yeah, like just, yeah, i don't know yeah. it's cool yeah and I, r- I agree it looks a little bit shit <laughs> like we look much better with normal clothes but it was kind of cool it is kind of cool now that I'm thinking about yeah, it yeah and then we we do exactly the same thing as skiing for example yeah and you don't ski fucking downhill guys In wearing jeans. big packers <laughs> and big pants you know yeah. they want to go fast yeah and there was a lot like lately honestly everybody is wearing things really tight yeah so yeah. it's not skin suit but it's so tight yeah. so the limit now is kind of doesn't exist anymore yeah like some guys like me even at world champs i had a bmx jersey that my trainer uh took from a bmx guy that was a little bit tighter than the downhill jersey and it did a big scandal in, into the federation because they were like because amori and loris were second and third you know like the frenchies were had all the chances to win and then i won with that jersey so they were like how did he get this jersey why is he wearing this jersey it's not legal like it was a lot of like really yeah like talk about it like so much drama so is it illegal to wear a skin suit now skin suit is illegal uh-huh. but they have also a rule of, and i'm not sure exactly i'm talking shit probably <laughs> but they have a rule about how tight things can be and my thing was in the rule but so close to being probably not which legal. that's how you're supposed to race and we just the thing is we just put it on for the final because all week you uh, can ride the thing some people put the jerseys french national blah blah blah. and i was wearing the normal one for the whole week until the finals <laughs> i sure finals with that jersey smoke everybody they were like <laughs> <laughs> that's why people hate the french yeah fuck it <laughs> i don't care no one can take it away so yeah. what year was that last year so that was last year world champs yeah in france fucking love that and actually that's where i was that was oh four my first race i watched on tv so i was 10 yeah when barrel won his first world championships on the same track or same hill really and then when i won this year or last year sorry it was like 18 years later and he was there and he like hooked me on his shoulder like if you see photos from it i'm like standing above everybody and he i'm on his shoulders so that's pretty cool that's so sick dude yeah. so how much involvement did you have with him as like a young guy like was he pretty involved in your career not in my career but he's always been trying to help yeah younger people and be a little bit sharing his visions but i actually had the opportunity when i turned pro in 11 to go with him and his team or uh, with uh, lapierre at the time but Lapierre was the team where Blinky, Sam Blinkinsop, yeah. the Kiwi guy, yeah. was riding for. And he was my idol. Really? I really loved the guy, the style, everything. So I was he like... He has dope style on yeah. a bike. No gloves. Just yeah. sending it. And it's just so cool. And everything about him, like New Zealand, like I was like, oh, I'm going there for sure. And I, I think it was one of the best decisions of my life because I would have been learning so much from Fabien. But I would have stayed in that French mold. Yeah. Not so fun, not so open to the world. Like when I talked to Blinky, he was loving the fact that I was trying to speak English. Yeah. And I was talking to his friends and then I started to talk to everybody. 
And everybody was like, oh, you can actually speak English or try, or you're nice. It's a cool French guy. Yeah, and then after that, they be, they accepted me, kind of, while the first image they had, they were like, ah, oh, fuck, another Frenchie. Yeah, yeah. But then they were like, ah, oh, it's cool. And then the next ones after me, they were also doing that because they wanted to be talking to Because the, it was guys. working so good for you. Yeah, and then it was so normal to be talking English and stuff, so... We all not the best in English. Like it's pretty diffi- difficult for us somehow. Like your English has come so far though. Yeah, <laughs> like a long way. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, but at the same time, like they didn't care. We were, we were trying at least, and yeah. then now the Frenchies are a bit annoying because we have a lot of, of fast ones, but they like the Frenchies. Yeah, and that's so nice. It's cool that to be a part of change in that. Yeah, because the sports definitely better when there's more yeah collaboration and guys are, there's more you need narratives to build sports and you need storylines and like if half the sport doesn't speak the same language as the other yeah, half then it's like kind of hard to build something it's good for everything because for us athletes to have friends and talk to everybody, everybody is yeah, super true. like it's really refreshing and then if uh, the TV you win the race you win the like whatever World Cup they come with you hey how was your run uh, yes amazing you know like yeah. it's good to be able to speak and have a good I don't know like a good personality on TV like it's good for the sport yeah and yeah I don't know that's I don't why, know. why is there so many fast French guys what is it about France that builds these kind of athletes so far I've been unable to really answer the question there has to be something I think it's because we have a lot of French teams. Like my team is French. For example, the management is French. Mm. Commensal is French. Like so they actually can the industries there. Yeah, in they a way. can recruit young Frenchies. Yeah. Which helps them to progress faster than if you're Australians, for example. Mm. I don't know any Australian team. Yeah. You need to go to the World Cup overseas, travel the world, and then you have like maybe a chance to get spotted by a good team and then if you're lucky they sign you and then you know it's like way more steps I feel yeah, yeah. while for Frenchies it's kind of easier and the f- generations being so good at the very early years of biking yeah. in France inspired I think us and uh, the other ones we're on again <laughs> are you sure? yeah <laughs> so we're talking about Fabio and the, the road map to the to yeah. The, yeah so like he had to move from France to Spain basically yeah that's what I mean like in France he probably wouldn't have the same path to yeah. being like Moro 3 Moro 2 Moro GP he had to go to Spain or Italy and then Spanish championship yeah. is like one of the stepping stones yeah and then he finds sponsors I remember him being like Wild Wolf or something when he was super young and he was, they were putting money for him to race yeah and in France it would have been super hard like it's not as common or easy yeah and for biking I feel like it's a bit the same like we we have a lot of opportunities in France. Yeah. Even though it's harder to make money compared to an American because a lot of companies are based in America and they would support American a little bit more easier easily yeah. than they would do with an European. Yeah. But it's still really good in France to make to make it to the good level at least. And what about the tracks? Like is there something to do with the tracks themselves that you mm, race yeah. that you think lend itself to that? Yeah, I think we got good tracks, good ski resorts who actually yeah. from the early days tried to make bike parks and stuff so we can go to France and ride a lot of good stuff. But when I was young I was not riding the best stuff. Like in Nice it's really technical and natural. You don't have many it's all like hiking path pretty much. Yeah. But then if you can ride that fast, you can ride anything pretty much. So it's, on the moment, it's not so fun, not so cool, but then it's actually, pays yeah, off you're happy term. that you've done it for so long because you go to World Cup tracks and it's like wider, smoother, and easier to go fast. Yeah, It's like, for me, I'm a really bad mud rider. I hate rain. But the UK guys, yeah, they were born in it. So then when it rains, they're so happy their speed on the dry compared to their speed on the wet it's not so different yeah well for me it's like there's a bigger gap to try to make smaller kind of man just to speak on that Danny Hart that year yeah (laughs) (laughs) like that is there's like one run well actually you can't really say one there's so many crazy runs that you could show people that have never seen downhill that one is but that's gotta be up there yeah 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 I think 
Oh, I mean, just because of Rob Warner too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The commentary <laughs> was all time. The writing oh. was next level. Psychotic, dude. Yeah. He's another guy that loves murder. Yeah, he's good actually. Yeah, yeah rips as well. I think he went to the US and wrote a lot in Florida. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> this winter. Yeah. Yeah, so like, uh, you're right, man. That, that whole UK mud. But I think that's what made... There was such a... Well, I mean, there, there's always been good Aussie talent. But I think that's what makes Aussies really fast as well. Is that there's so much like variety in track okay. so much variety in weather and yeah i mean then you get to like those kind of perfectly you know those they're not like groomed because they're super rough and gnarly but they're like so purpose built for downhill yeah they're prepared and then it's like you get a chance to yeah. like really excel no for sure and i think that's what uh like at the moment a lot of kids are really fast on yeah. good tracks yeah but then if it gets rougher and then at the end of the day you'll start last and things like this it's really hard for them because they don't really have the habit while for us like it's normal you know mm. one time I remember taking Blinky back like in the like countryside of Nice there's like a lot of trails really really nice ones beautiful but full of rocks yeah and not so flowy and Blinky was lost yeah He was so slow. Like, even my dad was faster than him, you know, like he was really <laughs> struggling and he was like, how do you do it? And I was like, I don't know. It's just like normal for us and it helps for sure. When uh, I rode here the other day, fuck the rocks, man. Yeah. It was so gnarly. There was one moment. I, I had a lot more fun than I thought I would when I like first looked at the trail. Okay. But uh, there was like one moment where I was probably... 25% braking power Ooh. like not not hard on the brakes at all yeah maybe even less but it, and I just hit one rock and just pick, my front tire was like gripped on the rock enough to like turn the rock and I <laughs> do I almost <laughs> was just on my face like instantly no, yeah. before I even had a chance to react the terrain here is so hard but you come from Cairns yeah and then there's so many rocks in Slippery Dead then that you might have some good bases for sure yeah we grew up Did you ever, when you when you went to Cairns for the World Champs um, and World Cups, did you ever ride any of the other tracks yeah. around? What tracks uh, did you do? Was it one called Karunga or something? That's, okay, so that's, I've probably done, oh, th I've done thousands of runs down that no track. No way. Yeah, that was actually, my track when I grew up. Actually, really good one. I liked it I a lot. rate that track, eh? Sick. Yeah. Yeah, everybody was going there like, few days before the actual race would start because we would all travel early for yeah. jet lag and stuff yeah and then everybody will just lap there because it was kind of it's so like easy the same yeah yeah and it's way easier than the forest where the race is yeah that's, that's cool that's my joy that's funny you were there yeah and it hasn't really changed that much like at least the last time that i did it it hadn't really changed since i was since i was a kid like it's been there for like probably 50 years problem is not many people like to dig and shape you know yeah like yeah. it takes so long then if the track kind of runs good and it's decent no one's gonna take uh days and days and go build another one yeah 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 well before i got a mountain bike uh, before i got a motocross bike every single weekend was spent burning fuel no up and down yeah <laughs> then we, we would like try and convince my dad the most amount of runs i actually did was with tracy hannah no way and mick hannah's dad yeah yeah because they were like i would just i was like a bum you know like i'd just try and get a i'd try and just get runs off like anyone that i could i used <laughs> to like ride my bike there sometimes oh. and just sit at the bottom and just like wait for wait people for someone, wait for uh, someone to in? come and be like oh is there room <laughs> or like i'll and then when i got my license i was like i'll drive if i can do like one every second okay. seconds yeah, yeah. but yeah dude there's so, so many laps of that so you're the same age as tracy I think she might be like a little bit younger than me. Okay. A couple years younger. But so they lived four doors down from me. No way. Yeah. Yeah. Like same, neighbors pretty much. Same street. Yeah. Yeah. The and world is so small. It's sometimes. so wild what how it works hell? out. Well, I think when you enjoy certain things, you know, like I think that was one thing I reckon that helped me in my life or my career is realizing that the world is small and like industries are small so it's like if you know if you got to know one person and you had a good name and you were like a good person then you could kind of meet anyone true but when you're on the outside of it like when you're young 
it looks like this massive big world that you could how could i possibly ever get into that but it's almost like once you're in you realize it is quite small once you're in like i don't know everybody from the industry at all but there's so many people i know and i could get to those people because yeah. this guy knows him or you know yeah and it's super it's cool in a way but it's also super scary because it's small yeah. and you have to be careful of yeah. what you say sometimes or do yeah that's why some writers they have some issues sometimes because they sign from one team to the other and then they have mm. bad negotiations and then everybody knows like, oh, this guy is not so easy to work with and then it's like ah it gets so suddenly it gets harder to work with brands and stuff so you have to be mm. yeah it's like a small like Andorra it's so small everybody knows each other you have to be careful yeah. if you drift your car too much and hit other like it's uh, yeah. everybody will know and then uh, you get in trouble so you you've been with Specialized for a while yeah how many years now it's my eighth years now yeah so that that's cool to be a part of one brand for for so long because yeah that takes so much fucking around out of like just the career you know having to change brands and one year deal with this team one year deal with this team or you, you can't For really sure. get a rhythm learn a new bike and then luckily specialized i've always made you know some of the best bikes maybe the best bikes yeah. but like that must have made life a lot easier for sure and i'm someone if you ask anyone around me like I don't like changes so much yeah, I like yeah. to stick to the plan yeah, yeah. if it works it works you know like keep the same people around me and then when I go world champion in 15 for the first time we were Lapierre the French brand you were yeah, yeah, you yeah. saw me with and then they, w- they were switching to full e-bike program so they were dropping the team so we had like another year running but they were like no yeah we stop after this even though they just got world champion which is kind of for a small french brand was kind of cool but that and it was a good bike right yeah it was like it was like the bike yeah because nico vuyos developed it with us and i don't know the synergy between the team and him was really good and then the bike was actually really good yeah but then that time in andorra before the race finished actually so before i even got the win the specialized manager like sports marketing guy came to me and was like hey Gwyn's leaving we want you I was like because ah. that's it's kind of like the top the top right almost yeah 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 it's like maybe like that Santa Cruz yeah you have like really high image teams let's say yeah and specialized was like it's pretty it was pretty cool at the time but it's always like scary pro- professional kind of it looks serious and stuff compared yeah, to Santa Cruz for yeah 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 so I was still in contract with my team. So I was like, uh, sorry, I, if I move, my whole team comes with me because I can't move alone. So my mechanic, my manager, Loris, and his mechanic too. It's Really? Yeah. And then the guy How was actually, I was 21. And you were like, sorry, boys, but yeah, if, but it, if it it's was not all of that. And so why? Just because they didn't have a job to go to? You wanted no, to because make sure. the team was dropping us. Yeah. And then I was still in contract with the management ah. so the, I'm in contract with the management like my mechanic Loris. and then they were sponsored by Lafayette exactly. essentially so I told Laurent my manager at the time I was like this guy came to talk to me you should talk to him because maybe we could do the whole team at Specialized and then it actually worked out in the end like a lot of negotiation they went to, uh, through but in the end they signed the whole team hmm. so they had two teams at the time like Specialized Racing with Troy yeah and Ropolato like another American and then us Specialized Gravity and then since that year we are like Specialized Gravity the S Racing stopped because Troy went to Kenya and like other things happened but we stayed like and now we're like the main team yeah but I, I'm still in contract with my manager with my same manager as when I first signed when I was 17 we just changed a little bit sponsors in the way but Specialized and I think that's why I'm still Specialized because they are really American and they have so much drive and they go like a, mach- a really fast yeah, brand Yeah. and they will probably not waste time sometimes talking and trying to make good relationship with you while Laurent it's his job and he was making sometimes the bike was not working or the development was really we had a lot of conflict and stuff but Laurent always find a way to make it work and then we could keep going for so long and specialized now 
really believes in us and trusts us on our feedbacks and stuff while the first year we were there they were like fuck just another team but now the story is way stronger and I feel like yeah. I actually belong with the brand yeah. and we actually work together so that's really actually uh, good and so has that has that bike changed like obviously yeah. it's changed like you know you see them release the new models but has it gone to like be now one of like the best bikes like you guys yeah. got exactly what you wanted out of it yeah like so it's we're on the third generation of frames let's say chassis yeah then like since we started and now actually it's insane yeah like, we finally because they started to trust us they listened to us way earlier in the process of developing the new bike and stuff yeah we could do a lot of input and then with their knowledge and their team which is like they have the best guys in the business you know they have they're the biggest brand so they're like yeah can offer themselves the services of the best ones yeah plus our then they testing the feedback riders. yeah they come to the races they watch they analyze the bike now is so sick i'm actually so happy like i just finished three days and every time we we make like big blocks of testing or riding we find new solutions yeah new directions to go and then the bike gets better and then i'm still having a lot of fun you know it's like it's for me it's like a second uh, breath Can yeah, you say that? yeah 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 i feel yeah, like motivated yeah. again like it's not that i lost motivation last year but but new things give you new fire yeah and the bike i felt i felt like last year was exploited to the max like we optimized it as much as we could and yeah. we couldn't make it faster so this year's a new model yeah oh, but it's still sick. like really prototypey so it's not really looking nice it's yeah. like really tech yeah like tubes stuck into like cnc <laughs> yeah like it's really really cool piece like super well made but it doesn't look finished yeah so maybe next year it's gonna be production or the uh, year okay. after i don't know yeah but it's uh it's cool and like so the what's the kind cool. of like what's the things that like some feedback you went to them and said what's stuff that makes a difference at your level so what i care a lot about is the flexibility of the frame uh because the way it will move and like get stressed yeah is kind of gonna also uh give it its personality yeah. and then i really like a bike that moves a lot yeah so it kind of helps you going through off cambers find the grip yeah and just like moves with you and then so that's like a really important point so we try like different uh, layers a different type of uh, carbon trace tracing no? yeah, yeah i don't know like the way they go together they like the wave yeah yeah and like that's a big part of the specialized job and then we have different linkages for like the cinema the kinematic i think it's in english yeah so it's the way the when your linkage moves it it's gets the way more progressive yeah and it's the yeah. way your axle in the rear moves too uh, so yeah, you have yeah, so yeah, much yeah. ways and options yeah to make it either move straight the axle either comes forward either comes oh, backwards back. yeah so you have like plenty of uh choices let's say yeah and that you can fully change with the linkage and then on top of that we have Odin's which is uh we are the only team they fully factory support yeah and they have so much technology and new things to try and every time we are not exactly right with the bike so we are missing something that we cannot reach mechanically wise with like the chassis and yeah 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 they can compensate or like uh. give us like what we need or what we miss so we actually have so much help from the sponsors and so today like the last three days we had a lot of in between shocks that was that were gonna help the bike go towards less pro progressivity for example yeah than the most progressive but more than less progressive you know we have diff so it was like all in between because it's never exactly perfect yeah and then so the more it goes the more we're like exactly where we want to be that's so sick yeah that must be a fun like i'm a nerd when it comes to that okay. so on like my bike even though i'm not very fast i love to fuck with my bike and just try sick. and get it to yeah, feel it's fun. i think that yeah that to me i think is fun some people think it's a nightmare pain mm. in the ass mm. never want to do it just want to rock up and have my bike perfect and or they can't even feel things when they change it but to me half of the fun is 
click here, click there. Is my balance right? Is my sag right? Is my rebound good? Just all those little things. If I change these triple clamps, if I change it, like handlebars. Like I, I started, I, I had a crash and uh, I have this like, norm, I normally run these like ODI bars. Crash, bent them. And it was a tiny crash too, which I was like, okay. you know, one of those unlucky ones that you just yeah. hit it just right. Didn't have anything but twin walls in the shed, like the rentals put them on couldn't ride my bike for sure so stiff yeah like so stiff when you said that i was like what and then so i just got the hacksaw out (laughs) cut my twin walls taped them back up and then i'm like oh that's much better like but it was still not as soft as the odis so like i don't know to me it just seems like so much fun to go through that process and it's the same for us like we have so many options and the only thing we're looking for is make the back the bikes as fast as it can be mm-hmm. so we that we don't have to compensate anything we just have to ride as good as we can and the bike's gonna be faster because on the same so that's how we do testing i ride 85 percent let's say every run try to make full runs with the data and stuff so it's like uh reproductive so you can see yeah like, so you can be the same can, every time yeah you can see uh. the di- what does the settings change does uh live with the same commitment same speed and if it goes faster or not and what do I, want to, I wanted to go with this yeah and if your bike with the same commitment is two seconds faster on the two minute track then that's the di- direction you want to go because you're not trying harder but the bikes allow you to go uh, you know yeah 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 and yeah. i think yeah everybody but does it affect that. the does the bike then change though when you go faster yeah for sure and the faster you go the f- the more you have to change your bike because the bike at uh, let's say your level if i take it i'm gonna have fun blah, 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 but if i push it's gonna be too soft not too forgivable and yeah, i'm gonna yeah. hit the limit yeah but if you ride my bike it's gonna be the same to go to the limit of my bike you'll have to push so hard let's yeah, say yeah but if you can find the right setting for finals because you do practice blah, blah blah but finals you always put more sauce so do you know then like because you're testing at 80 percent do you then know what you'd have to do for a hundred percent theoretically yes uh it's always, so that's where the that's why it's is. tricky okay because okay, you okay. always bet a little bit on yep. where you go your pace will be yeah and then you adapt your bike to that but sometimes you're a little bit off like last year the first race was in Lourdes and we had new suspensions like it was working really well but then we went too optimistic on the settings so we like went like fully raced like super cross bike almost yeah like hydraulic full on like the bike was a rocket but (laughs) I couldn't handle it you know (laughs) yeah so by the first minute I was already like struggling with grip yeah and struggling to hold on so uh, by the end I was just like riding like a dumbass yeah and then i lost uh like i was third so it was still pretty good but i could feel like the time just i was losing time just because the bike was not in phase with what i had to give it was just too stiff too rigid mm. but no, then not forgiving sometimes your mechanic but that's why it's super important to have a good relationship with your mechanic and have a good one because you can most of the time bet right and then when you race, it feels like home. Then you put like a lot of commitment of sauce in your riding yeah, and the bike yeah. can take it and then take you further. And then that's it. It's really hard to get, but it's what we are looking for. And so what is it like in that then? Is it is it purely in suspension, that setting? Because you're not going to then put more on the linkage and more on the, like it would just be yeah. in the compression and rebound basically. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of things come into play like spokes uh, size spoke tension uh. tires what pressure Damn. inserts or not but mainly it's the suspensions because it's what can you can really feel mm. and what can make the bike go to another level or not and I feel like with Olin's it feels like it will sound pretentious but they actually understand what we need yeah, and they can deliver that while and i think it's really advantage for the team like we have insane suspension like when you go race settings like it's really stiff but the hydraulic still is 
smooth, let's say, but like firm as fuck. Yeah. While the other brands, it's like bigger brands, bigger production. They have way more teams. Yeah. So they are more limited on customizing the things for each guy. And then they just kind of do two clicks there, two clicks there. And I feel like they don't exploit their bike as good as we do. Yeah. So I think they should. Yeah. But they can't because of their sponsors, deals, whatever. It's complicated politics too. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm really lucky to have specialized and audience uh, in my corner. It's so cool to hear that. Like, I guess I've just never... Because I guess there, there's the nerd in me too of like the mountain bike. I never, like I've never ridden a factory yeah. downhill bike. And, you know, the, the last downhill bike I had was an intense M1. No way. Yeah. So this, that's this like, old school. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's like, that's my reference point. Okay. But even when I rode Anton's Turbo Levo the other day, I was just like, this is bullshit. How hard? I think it's got 38 mil forks on it. It's like that's better than my downhill bike yeah. back in the day. Like you can just there was one there was one section there was like the three last downhill trails that we did and Morgan uh sorry Ollie was saying he he's like oh these are good three good trails that you can really like send it down and then I went just full fucking full send on the thing like trusted the bike and was just like gah, 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 like just smashing <laughs> shit and i was like blown away yeah. by it so like to hear the level that you are taking the testing and the the development and you know carbon weaves and that to me like that's like music to my ears you know it's it's really cool to do that and i feel like the spot got that's why you said like the spot got into a good spot where everybody's fast because also the, the brand got so much better yeah the brands has got a lot of input now and everybody's testing developing new stuff so it's really cool it's not as far as moto like for example uh we don't have the engine we don't have some of the th that those things but we have the rest yeah. and it's really really cool already bluetooth shifting yeah like all that yeah, shit yeah that's bigger like does your bike have that yeah. downhill bike no because they only that. make it for like enduro and like the big cassettes like yeah, yeah and downhill yeah. I don't know if we would I don't know they don't make it yet yeah we have, still have cables do you think you that will go to it I think eventually yeah but yeah. I kind of like the cable because I, for example on my road bike sometimes I forget to charge oh like, yeah 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 your I'm mechanic's not gonna do that at a world <laughs> yeah, cup though <laughs> no for sure <laughs> yeah but then for every day it's kind of easier like mechanical and it, I don't know I'm a bit of an old school like I said I don't like to change so much sometimes yeah yeah so I'm like yeah the cable works why do we change it you know it's yeah. really cool but I like the cable too I think one of the things that when I listen to down, like listen to downhill bikes now you can't hear the things yeah it's sick eh my bike used to be like <laughs> Like yeah, it sounded, bang, yeah. it sounded like I was riding a toolbox down a hill, <laughs> like through a toolbox <laughs> down. <laughs> That's a good image, actually. <laughs> I can see the M1 just bring, bring, bring. Oh, dude, it sounded like the biggest fucking piece of shit. Yeah, and that to me is like the most sexy sound. It's like a good downhill bike with a good rider, just like s almost silently smashing their way down the hill. Yeah, like sometimes the when it's pretty, I agree. It's like. You see the guy come and it's like you hear the tires. Yeah, that's it. And then it's like it goes as a as a feather. Yeah. And then you're like, what the hell? Yeah, it's yeah. So sick. Yeah, they've come such a long way. The electric moto is getting closer to that. Yeah. Because you can hear new things now. Yeah. And probably at some point they will make those things quieter. Yeah. Like the chain. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Because I don't like the sound of the chain, for example. Yeah. It's kind of like violent, like. Well, you should probably need to tighten your chain. Yeah. Or maybe. Uh, <laughs> Uh, what's the name? A belt. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't because some road bikes have belts on them. Yeah, they have like, like Harley's and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. I wonder if they'll ever do that. I don't think it's gonna work in off road. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe but, not reliable enough. I that, don't know. I just got an image in my head then of Greg Menard's Honda. Yeah, that was epic. Fuck, man. dude. Yeah. How old were you when that thing came out? I was like less, uh, ten or less. It Wait, was do like, you remember I it? was eight when it came out. Yeah, yeah, I remember it because there was also a run where Mighty Lakonen, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. teammate of me now, won yeah. Champery. Yeah. When Sam Hill got third, crashing in the, like, Lakonen rode in the dry. Mm -hmm. Sam Hill went pouring rain. Yeah. 
crashed and got third. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, insane. I think that was 2007. Yeah, okay. Something like this. Yeah. And then Lycanen had the Honda. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the bike was beautiful. Dude, those it's a shame they re- withdraw from that. Yeah, because th- I think they only did it for memory. Uh, I think there was like a Racer X article back in the day really? about it. Yeah, okay. but I think they only did it to like do geometry testing because no it was idea. so much easier to build a mountain bike frame and mess with geometry than building motocross frames. Okay, so they wanted to have like a quick turnaround on frame production, and then they end up making maybe the best downhill bike yeah. of all time and then just dip those bikes now will still be like on top yeah you think like maybe not on top on top but at the same level because they had so much technology the gearbox yeah everything was show us suspension show us suspension dude they were like when they showed up with that everybody was like what i re- wonder where like would Minar have one of those bikes do you think yeah i think so i've seen one in he has a shop in peter marksburg and i think there's one like hanging there I've seen it. Yeah. That's that's maybe one of the most, most rare bikes of all time. This one, I think you cannot own it. It's nah, like either you were you're a factory at the time, either you don't. Man, if you were Greg Menard back then, you were for sure keeping a couple of those yeah, bikes. For sure. Like just figuring out some way to fudge the numbers because that's like rare, rare. That's rare like, history. They, were, they were maybe like, I don't know. Let's say there were four riders. So maybe... 12 frames or whatever not many they probably took half of them back to the factory yeah so there's maybe like five out there I wonder if he was getting paid well too by Honda then I reckon because that was big money back then I reckon but I think I think now it's better is it with what Red Bull TV like the last 10 years like it's, yeah. it got to a good spot and I think the sport is higher than ever so yeah. the brands are paying better than I think huh? I'm not 100% sure but what, with what I kind of understood from what Greg said yeah I think the money is good now yeah is he racing again this year yeah 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 <laughs> he's 40 I think this year is 43 at the end of the year he's got like he's the best ever right yeah he's the GOAT he has the most World Cup wins ever but I don't understand like <laughs> it's fucking good cause I mean, how hard is it, like, even for you? So, how long have you been? So, 2015 was your first World Champs? Mm, yeah, but I started in 11 juniors, two years. First year, really, 20, 10 years ago. Yeah. So, that's, like, my 12 years in World Cup. And how do you feel? Like, do you feel it passing you by a little bit? And not passing you by, but, like, because there's every year new generation new generation new gen- and they've got more information more information they got more to go off they've seen more shit their idea their concept of what's possible is so much further ahead than when you were a kid like even when i started jiu-jitsu right there was guys that were black belts the day that i started jiu-jitsu and in five months of doing jiu-jitsu i had been able to absorb so much more knowledge than what those guys could have true you know like in five months of them doing jiu-jitsu back in when they started there was no dvds there was no youtube there were no books there was no like flow grappling where you could watch every match like to if you start jiu-jitsu today you can study for 24 hours a day and in three months like you'll really fuck some people <laughs> up so really? like, yeah for sure i'm gonna start that then. dude i think you'd love it actually <laughs> but that's the same in downhill in a sense like you can watch every downhill run of every track and watch every style like 24 hours a day you can completely immerse yourself and when you think about the like seeing the bubba scrub for the first time yeah and you, when you're a five-year-old and you don't know anything different but a bubba scrub, true. how much advantage does that give you? So you think about now, apply all of that to Greg Minar. But I feel like that's... Greg probably does get information still and goes to find those things. So he keeps on learning every year. Mm. He has to, otherwise I don't know how he's doing it. And for sure when you're like 18, coming up to the elite, whatever, like you have so much riding already in you because you have better bikes from an earlier age and stuff but Greg has more experience yeah 
and if he's actually getting those informations and trying to stay at the surface of what's new yeah. of what's happening then he has an advantage of on us mm. but for sure the age like when you're 35 i agree but when he's 43 yeah. at some point i think physically you have to decrease your fitness or something yeah but if but would it be fitness because is it that hard on you fit fitness wise to do three minutes obviously not because uh you can do it yeah. but it is like we train fucking hard for all those three minutes because there's so much that comes into it the whole week yeah so you need to like uh go through the whole week and be the freshest the more sharp mentally and the more fast on the last run of the whole week you know yeah that includes a lot of practice runs track walks like a lot of things media that runs you down but then so you need to do a lot of endurance a lot of things to get ready for that last run but at the end of the day some guys train more than others some are fitter than others so there's not one way to succeed yeah and Greg probably has figured it out with all that experience yeah he just knows that like when he's ready yeah and you can see like if you watch his season you can feel that he's not giving 100% at every races because he can't win them all yeah there's some races he knows he doesn't take the fight and he just will settle with eight but some others you can see him like fully switch into a winner and, yeah and we'll go for the win which is like really impressive to watch like world champs he was 41 when he won one champs last time in Italy one of the hardest track I was like what the hell that and for example mental. he was one of the only ones there were two guys who did that strategy started not so fast so like maybe top First five split, second top split, split and then yeah. the last split like really kept on going and then him and another French guy was with first and second and they all they were super fast and we all like did the mistakes of starting full on and by the th third quarter of the track we were like dead yeah arm pump cd everything was going like shutting down and then we all lost so much time in the last split and then he got us so i don't think there's a specific way to win but he figured it out for sure but i think now to be honest last year and this year i, th I don't know it's, we didn't race yet it's gonna be really hard for him because everybody's stepping up everybody and then he's actually getting old yeah then at some point it's like Rossi it's Valentino Rossi but when it at some point stop yeah. so I, I admire respect him so much but I really want to beat him because for me, <laughs> for me, he shouldn't he shouldn't be in front of us. <laughs> he you know, it's even not be normal. Like we suck if he does. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we'll see this year. But what do you think goes though? Like, is it your eye speed? Like how you see? Yeah. The things coming at because I don't think it could be just fitness. Like it's got to be something mentally. Maybe that there's like the like Sete right? Sete was just here one of the best MotoGP riders, like he was the man. And he said that there was a point Valentino took him out in Jerez one year. Okay. And, oh, and, uh, yes. <laughs> and uh, he said after that, it was just like, I was backing off the throttle, you know? So it's like, okay, maybe it can't just be, just be fitness. Like maybe there is, yeah, the, like the eye speed, the way that you see the track, how fast it feels like things are coming at you. I don't know. Like, do you think that... Like, what do you feel like in you that would slow down that would make you want to stop? Mm, because surely you can be yeah. fit. Injuries. Yeah. Injuries. Like, now I'm single, but if you have a family, probably you want, yeah, like your attention is a little bit more on the family, then you don't take as many risks. You know yeah. that when you're young, you come, you have nothing to lose. Yeah. It's there for glory, pretty much. Yeah. But then when you're 40, or even me, 29 this year, I have this different approach that... I don't need to prove anything anymore. Then I'm going to perform and I'm going to be able to switch on my mental sharpness and really good zone where I can perform or not. Sometimes I just can't. It's really hard to touch it. Yeah. So sometimes you just try to get close, but you don't. Yeah. And I will not take more risks than I need to. Yeah. Well, and that's what Greg does. Yeah. Greg rides at his level. Some days he goes for the win because he can. Some days he doesn't. But he won't do the mistake 
to go every day for the kill. Yeah. You know, he's like he's like an old lion that goes to hunt on the perfect moment. <laughs> and he's it's doing, true. Yeah, 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 yeah. doing so good at it. And then f at some point when you're getting older, you have less and less, you care less and less about risking your life. Yeah. Because it is a bit dangerous to go and win those races, like what it is at the end of the day, Yeah, you know, to win a race. And then I feel like when you don't care at all anymore, you stop. Yeah. And, but Greg d still does care. It, he doesn't seem like one of those guys, though, that, you know, you get those guys that race forever just because they're like, well, we actually kind of like half talked about this before, where it's like they're still chasing the glory, the glory, the glory. Like, yeah. I don't I don't know. I don't know him. I'd love to chat with him one day. But he doesn't. He just seems like he just in, is there because he enjoys, he enjoys to, it, to, sure. to do it. But yeah, I mean, there are some guys they just like can't let go of like being the star that they once were, you know. Yeah, and I think Greg has this problem for sure. Like, he's been over 20 years. Yeah. One of the best guys in the sport. He's a legend. Everybody like ad adores him. The goat. The goat, and he's the biggest name, whatever. And then he can still do, do really well. So why would he stop? But I feel like for sure, enjoyment, like fun is a part of it. Like he loves it. But I hope for him that it's, that's it. Because yeah, if, you, if you're not able to step out at some point, because I feel like Rossi, some guys take it too far. Yeah. Then you lose a little bit the prestige yeah. of the image you leave on the spot. Because at some point, like if in the perfect world, I would leave when I'm 35 and I just won world champs yeah but at some point you have to forget about it because you're not performing anymore and it starts to be dangerous I think if you try it's too hard to stay the yeah, great now of like 2010 do it for the wrong reasons and I think like without talking especially about Greg or whatever I think it's really for every athlete it's fucking tricky point yeah. on your, in your career yeah because you don't know if you can handle going back to the incognito and yeah. going back into the people like common people let's yeah. say even though we're like normal people but then if I go to Colombia like I did like two weeks ago yeah that was crazy yeah that was super sick but yeah, people yeah. they welcome you like a superstar and they love you and you know it's like it's so it feels amazing yeah it's it's also dangerous because you want this anywhere it's like I go like a drug if I go to I don't know like for example I also after Colombia I went to the Red Bull Summit so all the athletes from France meet yeah yep yep and yep. have like some f and then they all mega cool in their sports so I go there and they don't give a shit about me because they are the same in their sports you know and and it's weird because I don't have this social advantage yeah, <laughs> yeah of being yeah. cool before they even know me yeah you know yeah, yeah. And I feel like in the real life, I struggle so much with that. So I'm scared about the yeah. point where I would have to be stepping down from super bruni, my asshole, whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Dude, it, it's weird. Like I um, I got a little bit of that the other day at the GP because when you start to get like recognized for being someone that's not essentially you, right? Like we're chilling, like it's me and you. Yeah. And then this is like your... This is like as real as as you get but then there's also this and the people don't know this you as much as they know super bruni and in, and in gear and at the track and signing autographs and on this side of the fence and like that's a whole character that you're like kind of almost playing and it's weird when you know that people know that character but and so i was at the gp the other day and there's no like it, the podcast isn't as big in Europe in yeah. I just don't think podcast like an English podcast in in Italy is just not going to be as big in general you know they don't speak English <laughs> <laughs> they don't give a fuck hey <laughs> and uh but so like I'm kind of like walking around the crowd and I'm seeing people looking at me and it's weird because I'm like are they looking at me because they're looking at me or are they looking at me because they know <laughs> yeah. me and then some of them do and then some of them start talking to you and they want to take a photo and whatever but then other people like do they look at you and they're not saying nothing even though they know who you are or are they looking at you and they don't know who the fuck you are like it actually does yeah it, it kind of fucks with you a little bit and if you sometimes it makes you realize how bad it must be to be a fucking worldwide star 
Oh. Like an actor or something. Yeah. Because it will be like that the whole time. Yeah. And that's why they lose it for sure at some point. They do drugs and shit because <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's it's fucked. <laughs> and like you say, like sometimes I don't feel like I play the character, like the the image of Super Bruni or whatever. But when I go to the races, if it was me, fully me, I would almost hide in the van, like chill, like not yeah. talk to many people. But I can't because you're like I know like I've been told like you're the product you have to, you have to go and then I in the end I like it like in Leger the world champs yeah. I like to go to the people and feel the vibe and feel how fucking happy they were and stuff but it's not me like deep down yeah, you know yeah yeah like I I got it's me on the bike but yeah. me without the bike I'm not like that at all and that's really hard sometimes to also on social media and stuff to find the balance because that's why I don't post so much because Super Bruni or whatever is only at the races every day I'm just like <laughs> yeah, no yeah, one yeah, just normal yeah. yeah yeah. and then my life as everyday guy is, for me it's not worth sharing so much and stuff so it's really tricky to say it or to decide what's cool to post or not uh, Do sh and people will be like yeah post just what you do it's cool yeah but I don't want I don't care you know yeah But at the races, I would because yeah. I'm like, oh, it's this the my race. job. Yeah, yeah, this is my. And that's character. why also like now see I'm wearing like random clothes. Yeah. At the races, I put the f most flashy things, like the biggest pajama, because it's like, it's like a big day, like a wedding day almost, you know. Yeah, yeah. But it's not to say I don't know. It's really weird. No, no, I fully, I fully get yeah, and it's weird to know. Yeah, it's just it's like just probably you, for example, in yeah. Trentino the first day you realize that okay some people know me look at me take photos then the next day you will expect that a little bit yeah. and then you will maybe that's change that's the weird part yeah. the weird part is when you're expecting it to happen <laughs> that's the bit that I don't like okay. that's the bit that I think feels gross yeah is when like you're cause yeah nor, like I just go you go around normally like it just doesn't fucking matter like you go I went and bought a tripod today and a coffee and, like <laughs> you don't have any feeling or expectation yeah. where you're like anticipating it but then yeah you go to like you go to a world cup like you can't hide anywhere like there's a, no point does someone not know yeah who and you then people are. will look at me I'll be like yeah, hello and you get that expectation Because, feeling yeah yeah I, I'm like okay they know who I am but maybe not but I expect them to know and that's the thing that's <laughs> weird that's the bit that I'm like ooh because that makes me feel like I have I guess like I would be scared of wanting that feeling. Yeah. You know what I mean? I see what you mean. So it's like, it's one thing to enjoy it because so like the, it was weird because the podcast blew up mostly in COVID. It was that, that was when, that was when I opened the US studio because I didn't have any guests coming to my studio. And then that just changed the game like we just started doing millions of downloads every single week and it was just like fuck that's pretty <laughs> hectic and so but then you couldn't go anywhere yeah. and like i was saying i had like long distance like i wasn't even leaving my apartment i was just going to the studio doing jujitsu and so you didn't feel the fame no nah, nothing coming there because he couldn't go anywhere mm. and then we went to melbourne supercross last year and it was just full on like oh everybody knew and I was walk. I couldn't really not like I couldn't go anywhere but I couldn't go anywhere without people stopping and talking and taking pictures and then when talking's your job people want to talk true <laughs> and I don't want to not talk <laughs> but you don't want to talk either because you have stuff to do no? yeah I was like we were going to get food you know and I had like my brother and it's weird when you've got other people with you and then they have to just stand around while true. these people are like talking to you so it's not to say so that feels good like it's good to have people appreciate you and obviously value what you do and share their stories and share what they like that makes me feel really good it's recognition too. yeah and it and it gives me like it's like humbling in a way because it makes you like well it makes me take my job more serious it makes me respect what I do it makes me be grateful all the time it makes me want to work harder so it's like I think it's like a good interaction but to feel like I want that interaction 
that would be scary and that would make me feel like a fucking piece of shit yeah to want that feeling you know I so i think like that's the and and so yeah you go to trentino and you're like looking at someone and then they're looking at you and then <laughs> you i'm like almost judging myself in the moment like oh is this is this gross <laughs> like do i want them to say hello you know i don't know I if you can relate natural. to that it's natural but expectations with that and everything it, it's not only for that expectation if you expect them to know who you are you expect them to like this podcast yeah or you expect your girlfriend to be in a certain way you you know yeah like it's never good i think mm. as soon as you expect something mm-hmm you put a potential disappointment or potential risk uh, and I think that's really tricky yeah but it is hard not to expect anything because it is coming at you then for sure you will expect more yeah and so it's coming back to stepping outside your career yeah what if you go like two race two years later to race and no one recognize you no one gives a fuck <sighs> or they recognize you and they don't care yeah you know it's like and then if you cannot really like let it on the side it probably be super tough mm. because your brain is at, like acclimated to get all that attention, attention yeah, yeah like yeah. F- fame and like people wanting to be like you inspi- like you an inspiration and if you don't have that anymore then yeah, yeah it's probably tasteless or not as cool yeah probably I don't know yeah but yeah do you so and you think the same thing in relationships like if you dated a person that was like with you as super bruni and then you then you retire and then because man like especially like supercross races like there's been so many supercross races that i've known that you see they've got the hottest chick (laughs) the hottest chick dude like just fucking killing it and then they retire and then it's like two years later they got a kid together and then they break up and then uh, that's and you're like oh man was she like with that guy like was she dating that supercross rider or was she like with him that shit's fucking scary we could go so like so long on this i think really yeah for sure and i just like i just like it was some time ago now but i got out of the relationship and she was telling me about this like because last year i got a lot of injuries and I was asked for her. I like for me, I didn't see it so much, but I was axing away. So I was not racing, not getting results because I was uh, off racing. Yeah. And I was acting away to get attention from other people and other girls, apparently, mm. because I was not getting any attention. Like, and she was scared that I was never going to be able to not be like that. Uh. And I think for like supercross, every sport, for sure, like a woman. It's not like it's in her nature. It will be attracted to someone successful because it's it's inspiring. It's cool. It's it's nice to be with. Comes someone. with a good lifestyle. Yeah, and it's like it's normal. Like I can complain. Like if if I would be sing like I'm single now, I'd probably be more attracted to a successful woman and that loves what she does and get money for it than someone that doesn't do anything. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like so Supercross is like out there, like big like big money tv time like i don't know and probably there is a little bit of that coming into their relationships because it is unavoidable unavoidable yeah like of course she likes being next to you i don't know yeah but it is the cons the pros and the cons that's like a cons of being famous because I'm not famous, huh? Like, compared to Supercross guys, we're way chill. But in your own world. But you, she, yeah. she was from the biking world. And I think we met because she knew who I was. Like, you know, it was kind of easier for me. Like I said, yeah. I had the ticket, entrance yeah. ticket, VIP. Yeah. Fast track. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end of the day, it's not really maybe fully, fully for the right reasons. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. And it's hard to because also when you're like this you don't meet many people yeah when you're an athlete you have the routine you don't go out so much like it's hard to meet new people and to meet them also that's also outside. very true go go try to meet someone well you do you, you do a lot of different things which is different but as a supercross guy try to meet someone that has nothing to do with supercross they all from the outside 
they all date someone's sister from the same yeah. sport you know it's like yeah. Yeah. and then it's it's cool because they find love and stuff but it's also a bit uh, toxic maybe I don't close know. to home yeah so for me their yeah, relationships are so tricky and I, I'm still like trying to process my breakup and I'm like I don't understand <laughs> yeah what yeah so that's uh not to go too personal you know if you don't want to but do you think you learn something about yourself in a way where like you're like oh maybe i do need that like attention and so for me right i will hand on my heart say there was a big period of my life where how i felt about myself was in association to how hot the chick was i fucked <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest yeah. i'll be honest it is what it is i think that's part of being a i mean it's like a fucked up weird part of being a dude that yeah. that like it's it doesn't shock me and i think nah. it's it's normal it's not so nice but it's normal and it's what we are living in you know the world we're living in is like that yeah and same for the chick yeah I think she would care a lot about who she fucks and maybe, you know, this story of trophies sometimes. Yeah, yeah. That there is into, oh, yeah, I had this one, this one too, not yeah. this one. Yeah. I should go for this one. Well, even I think that it was, I think that it, a lot of it too was like, that was something that I thought made me cool with other dudes. Yeah. You know, like it wasn't even a thing where, it wasn't so much even about the girl as much as it was about being a man and being cool and like being like talking stories and be like yeah fuck this shit we we're like we we're doing this and that but yeah life definitely gets better mm. when you can get past that <laughs> and you don't have to look for those things as validation and like constantly need the tension from like this, from women yeah this makes me think about Palmer and Vuyos and stuff mm. like if you care about who you're with or for the wrong reasons and stuff instead of caring about yourself and your own little world and doesn't matter what other people say or do yeah then maybe you're in the wrong mm -hmm. and i feel like i understood some things about myself and about love and relationships and it's kind of too late now like i'm like shit mm. i wish i i saw it before yeah because now i feel like i'm like I'm ready yeah. for what I had, but it's too late, you know. But I'm like, that's. I feel like that's so normal, I'm unfortunately. Like, yeah, I'm like, and I'm like, I can like now I can be better, and I I don't want to be with that person anymore. Like it's it's over. But I'm like, I wish it wasn't. Kind of in a way, you know. I'm like, okay, and the small for me, the problems were small, and I could fix them quite fix easily them with now. That you've seen and, it. And, yeah, you know, yeah, and it's like fuck, such a big price to pay for small mistakes and human mistakes yeah because i yeah i was just normal like and i was i didn't do anything wrong or i didn't cheat on her or anything yeah but i can see why she was mad yeah and to me if we could have talked it out and she could have explained me why like what my value was for her yeah better you know like i don't know some stuff stuff like this might have been better and so it's so no chance of getting back with her, you reckon? No. Ship sailed. Yeah, far. But my ship has sailed too. <laughs> <laughs> Both ships like different directions. <laughs> like it's it is what it is. It's a bit sad because it is sad, like breakups are terrible. Yeah. Breakups and, are fucking the worst. <laughs> and the crazy part of it is that everybody has a broken heart. Yeah. Like I was when uh when it happened. I was like, I thought I was the only one feeling like this. You know? Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, I feel so shit. What, 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 what? But then I realized when you talk to your friends or other people, like everybody has been through like terrible oh, breakups. Yeah. And then it just happens and it builds your character and then it helps with your next relationship. So at the end of the day, you cannot help what happened yeah. and you cannot control what the other person's feeling and life mm, took that turn and i'm like i'm okay with it now and i i wouldn't say i'm not sad about it like yeah but i'm like okay i can it's like a challenge for me i'm like okay I'm well there gonna, is a thing where like i i was making like the same mistakes in relationships over and over but then like in my relationship now like i just 
I mean, I definitely made mistakes kind of at the beginning before I, I guess before it gets like that real serious stage where you like, you really know. But I think there is just a point where like the right person does like if you've learned enough about you know like the mistakes that you made and then like who you were in the past if you've learned enough i think it becomes obvious when the right person is there and you, is you almost sort of like can't do those things mm-hmm. to the right person yeah. if that if that makes sense and it sucks because yeah breakups are so gnarly dude <laughs> like especially when you've really put in some time and you live together had a house and all like fuck it just feels like the world is literally ending eh? yeah it's crazy but there's so much to be learned from it yeah 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 and what you say like with you know when it's the right person also is i love the fact like you're i'm alone i'm going home i'm chilling i love myself yeah like you know it's like yeah you're in your car no one breaks your balls yeah it's like you know it's your zone your your space but when there's someone else that comes into that space and makes that space even better yeah and you can be yourself and and that's what i was kind of like since i broke up i'm like trying to find again yeah and it's really hard to find yeah like to be fully yourself and the other person makes you feel yourself yeah and she's herself yeah like that's super cool yeah and so it's like sometimes it starts sometimes it ends sometimes it's last it's it's just like live it goes for every day like if it was a little bit less like it's super cheesy but because it is like that like i didn't see it coming or anything and then i wish at the end i was a little bit more like because i was hurt and i wanted to fucking race that world championships in france you know yeah and i only had that in mind and i didn't see her took a u-tail yeah and then i wish i kind of did because now i'm like fuck uh so you, you know like i, I you're so enjoy. focused on yeah and i didn't enjoy maybe the last part of my relationship enough yeah but anyways what are the but the, the french is so romantic <laughs> <I don't know>. <laughs> <laughs> you're just soft man we're you're sounding so french right now i love it i've never spoken about love with the french guy <laughs> <laughs> let's go man i'm ready but um, is that a, like a is that actually like a real because th- like you have some uh, even the years have broken up and it's like the both like you said both ships are going in different directions like you still talk about it so like romantically i think that's cool ah, thank you i feel like i've always been like this though like people who make fun of me like i was the lover boy like, yeah i'm kind of always been ah, the same to be honest see? yeah, yeah I, I, I get French. you bro. i get you but i just i'm really i think my sister is really sensitive and things like this mm. and she always talked about love like really open and stuff and I feel like I'm a bit like this too. Yeah. And when I was with my ex, she was from North Country, you know, like Scandinavia. Yeah. So they're yeah, like yeah, a bit yeah, like, yeah. yeah. And she was so surprised that I would talk a lot about my emotions and of the way I felt. I felt. And she struggled to open herself. Yeah. And say, okay, I feel this way now. Yeah. Can you? Can we change it? Can we work on this? I would. I would say that so casually, and she wouldn't. But I just believe. I think we are all different. The, yeah. the way we see love and stuff but I just really believe in the old ways a bit yeah like you find a woman and then you fight for each other and then you live for each other also it's not like I really appreciate having my own independence and mm. do my thing but I also love to have someone backing me up and someone yeah. who takes my my back and who who, have, who has my back sorry yeah and who will fight to make it work and things like this and yeah. i don't know it's like i don't know if i watch too many movies or something but yeah that's what matters in life yeah i i would train every, i wake up and train every day to win races but in the end it doesn't make me as happy as a nice relationship with a girlfriend or with friends yeah yeah make me you know cuz they can last so much longer yeah and it's it's more like important yeah somehow like racing is so not important when you think about it like (laughs) it's sponsors that one guy arrives in the company and decides to pay you because he likes you or not and then you win the race or not he pays you more or not people in 10 years will not remember that race you know it's like yeah there's some stuff they will remember but it's in the scale of of my life i was always trying to stay balanced because Biking can stop anytime. Yeah. 
a girlfriend can stop anytime. So I try to really play with the things so I can rely rely on one more when I need to because the other side's going shit. Like yeah. if I'm struggling with biking, I will find I'll try to find some attention and affection from my girlfriend more because I'm like I'm struggling, you know, like yeah. And then the like now I've I've had a super good winter, like training like a bitch and traveling and stuff because I don't have a girlfriend. Yeah. And it's also like I feel good, but I feel unbalanced right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I feel like my love life is a disaster, but I can't <laughs> help it. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm trying to start some stuff and I just can't. It's really frustrating because I want to, but my body is like no. Yeah, you're just putting everything into the the riding. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. Because <laughs> what if the riding goes to shit? Then I'm yeah, fucking yeah, depressed. Yeah. You know? Well, the, it's it's funny too because we just don't have perspective. Of literally, it's so, it's so crazy. Just you're sitting there now and only like a few hours ago, Sete was sitting there and it's the same conversation, but you're on like either side like you're still right in the middle of it oh, yeah. and he's right at he's at the end and he's saying all the same things and you know he's 50 he's made fucking squillions of dollars and he has a five-year-old daughter and he's like man my wife and kids that's like my most important thing and he's like family family and he's like the racing was only a moment you know so it's like you to have that perspective now for you is so good but i think just on average like in our life we just don't think about how long our life is gonna be of just not even really being able to use our bodies properly (laughs) you know like imagine like the utility of having a wife and a good wife or a good husband is like 65 onwards (laughs) when when it's like you guys just need to fucking survive (laughs) like you need to help me stay alive and like we don't really think about that shit that much you know yeah because also you don't know if you're gonna reach 65 at some point like surely though you know it's like anything can happen yeah and like I know how important biking is and I don't want to say it's not important, you know, like yeah, right yeah. now it is my life and it's been my life for a long time and it's it allowed me so much in life, but I just need both. And I yeah. will, that's why I, I think when I saw you, I was still studying. Like I studied until I was 21. I didn't know that. Yeah, I was like, I did an de- economics degree. I went to business school for, I, did, I didn't finish my master's because I went like in 100% and specialized internships. Yeah. And when I went there, I was like, what a <laughs> no yeah, more school right. just riding a lot traveling and I couldn't go back to school but I always needed that especially at the start when I was not sure my career will take off or not did your uh, parents really push that like, yeah my mom yeah yeah my mom she always kept me on the on the ground but also me I was like fuck it's so nice I race it's the Sunday and then the Monday I can switch off and go to do something else with different people yeah. and stay fresh and then if one goes bad I can always like fall back on my feet somewhere yeah and then after that I've when I fully enjoyed racing and I had good money and stuff I decided to stop because I was never gonna work straight away anyways yeah so I was like okay what if I graduate and start working in 10 years doesn't matter you got the degree I'll forget everything and then I'd rather take the opportunity now yeah and leave it instead of balancing 50-50 whatever and yeah I feel like it was pretty cool but I'm just someone like that some other people will need to be 100% yeah. into one thing to be successful but me no did it help to have that time away I think so because some people like you can you can almost like do your own head in you know like you just look under every single rock of yeah. like <laughs> trying to get the most out of it when it's like you could do like less is more almost yeah yeah and for sure sometimes you waste energy trying to do everything or answer every question and i think when you're older that's why you're better because those questions have been ticked ticked off or answered before yeah you don't have to waste waste the energy yeah you waste less time on those ones and for me it was a necessity and i had like my sister did studies and I like I come from a normal family you know like we were never believing in being a successful mountain biker my dad was doing it for fun 
never made a cent from it. So he was like, why would you? Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. Then, and then I was actually making some bonuses at first and I bought my moto and I was just like doing this like for fun. And then I started to be better and then people actually gave me like a salary per month, which was like the same as my mom approximately so she was like what the fuck <laughs> and i was like yes <laughs> and then now i make way more than my mom and she's like what the actual fuck <laughs> but she understands that it is like that and i am lucky to do that and school or not i should enjoy that as much as i can and it doesn't last super long so i should do it it's crazy to think that you were like worried about getting this degree and like okay i gotta have a plan but now like you're not gonna have to work yeah. you know, like you won't have to you've i you've won not. so much and you've achieved so much it's like you're just not it's not gonna be something you have to worry about i hope not like we don't make the same money as motor guys so it's not as obvious let's say that the future is chill but uh i try to make it as chill as i can because I like to enjoy my money now because fuck it. Maybe <laughs> yeah. I, I've lost some friends in the last few years. I'm like, what if it's me? Yeah. Like, I'd rather live the life I want. Yeah. But I also try to make some smart moves so I don't necessarily have to work 100% every day yeah. when I'm older. But to me, it's uh, like when you, when you come from a family, some people come from a bit more wealthier family and then they don't they have a different approach and then they have a better way of dealing with money or mm. with success and then me I'm coming from like a super random family then no one in the family was doing anything more than being like a worker or, yeah, or yeah. Flo like working on with flowers in the field so it was super chill so I I still need to figure out yeah. how to do this life with a bit of money you know Yeah. and it's hard dude there's a weird there's a weird thing like navigating that is weird right yeah because like i come from the same sort of deal like we just never like it's just never money was never a thing and even now like like yesterday oh, i just i didn't book my flight until like the morning before i did it i just couldn't be fucked dealing with it and then i was like all right i seriously need to book this flight home and there it was like 40 euros to upgrade to the f first seat on oh, the yeah. flight and so I had like baggage and priority check because I was like worried I was going to be late and miss the flight. And it's like, I have that money. Like that's yeah. not, that spending 40 euros to upgrade my flight is not going to make any difference to my life. But I felt weird doing it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, that comes from the, yeah. like you said, random family that never had anything and there's like some weird attachments and yeah and not to call it like trauma but there's like weird <laughs> things where you just don't it's your education yeah something. it's weird how that works yeah and sometimes like new zealand this year everybody like so many people flew business to new zealand from europe yeah and they were like because me i struggled i missed the flight but i struggled city and they were like yeah but you didn't fly business i was like hell no it's like five thousand euros they were like yeah but come on you can afford it i was like five thousand euros and they were <laughs> yeah. shocked that i didn't i'm probably paid as as well as them but they were shocked they're like yeah fuck it it's so much money it's 24 hours of your life it's okay to be sat with like some random <laughs> guys and then like for me like i don't i don't feel like i'm a uh, freaky pocket or tight yeah but some stuff don't make sense and yeah. i will not change because that's half a new moto exactly i was like i can pay a surrun with that <laughs> and then uh, I have one actually but that was I can do another one <laughs> but some people don't really I don't know have the same uh, relationship with money yeah and I'm 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 happy with the relationship I have but I wish my parents had a little bit more uh, knowledge on how to do like my mom she works at the bank so she, she's really like into like the bank things and and super safety investments yeah, and like yeah, she doesn't yeah. really knows where to put the money so it actually works well and then sometimes I have to figure out myself then I made mistakes you know it's like so it's not bad like I'm still super happy but I could do better yeah so I hope I can figure it out myself at some point yeah and but I'm yeah I'm so lucky 
Like, will, will you be chill to go work a normal job? Have you ever thought about that after? Be, it'd be weird to work a normal yeah, job after yeah, yeah, being... Yeah. Not, not like being super broony, but just the fact that you just get to wake up every day, do your own thing. Like, you, you've you got your own business. Yeah. Like, you're a business owner. Yeah. And the business... The brand is super broony. And that business is winning world championships. But it's so chill. And World Cups. In the end, like, when you think about it, you have, like, some really high peaks of stress in your in your year because of the races, the important ones. But all the training is kind of like, okay, some days are tougher than others, but it's kind of chill. Like you can wake up the hour you want, you eat what you want, you train where you want, you come back when you want. You know, it's like everything is kind of flexible. Yeah. And if one day I have to be not like this, <laughs> it's going to be tough. <laughs> That's why I'm trying to save, put some money there so it kind of comes back. And then at the end of the my career, I kind of have a salary that comes yeah, like a decent yeah, one yeah, yeah, yeah. without having to, it's like without needing to work. Yeah. But I couldn't work right now. I like even my manager, so the team manager is like g- losing his shit because of me because I always try to negotiate it my way, and because I think a different way we shouldn't go there. We should go to this one. He's always like, oh my god. So I don't think I could deal with no more job right now. Someone telling you what to do all the time? Yeah. It'd if someone f- tells me what to do, it's a bad start. It'd be fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I've always avoided my whole life. It, I'm just glad this is working out. I'm <laughs> glad you could. Yeah, you can <laughs> keep on doing that. It's kind of a luxury. Yeah. How, uh, how, how are you so good at the world champs? Like, how, what, what is it about? Because... So for people that listen to this that are moto heads that don't necessarily go deep into the downhill world, there's two ser- there's two titles that you want to win. There's a World Cup overall, which is like the motocross season, be 12 rounds, whatever. And then there's one day on one track for the world championship. And then the dude that wins that gets to call himself the best in the world for an entire year until the next time and you've figured that out like you've won world cup overalls as well yeah but you seem to have really figured that one out so what is it about that 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 you figured out maybe more than your competition in the last few years um i think it's because i it's subjective i don't know if it's the actual truth but i care less all the time but more a few times you know what I mean <laughs> explain <laughs> <laughs> like some people they go to a national and they will race as hard as they can and give their best and really try hard yeah and then when they come to the world cup or the world champs they will do the same but it will kind of be like on the ceiling yeah of that while I will be a little bit lower like nationals okay I get fifth it sucks for the confidence but I don't care yeah. like it's okay but then on world champs my like my in- entire body <laughs> knows it's now you know yeah, yeah. and I don't know why I just care a lot about this race and then I turn into this different version of me that's way smarter <laughs> <laughs> starts from really low <laughs> like way smarter way more attentive to like details and way more pro and then I'm able because it's really tiring to be like this I'm able to use this state it's like you know sometimes you go like if you use the nitro or whatever like you, it's only for a, a little bit yeah like you can go that fast all the time and then I use that small like for maybe four or five days that's I use this specific super uh, me like uh, where I'm a little bit better at everything and I can actually get it done I don't know how because this year for example on the second on the first turn I almost blew it I I was so close for binning it so I was I lost both wheels <gasps> Ooh. and then rode super like super well after that but still you can in one second it can all go from good to bad but I feel like it's just that I I care a lot and I ride like world champs 
I read, I try every time my best. Like I'm not saying I, I'm chilling at the World Cups, but at World Champs, there's something more with my heart that makes me yeah better. And I was not able to do it every time because I haven't won every time. But the last few years, I've been pretty good at it. And the World Cups, I don't have this ability to switch on that next level me yeah and then i'm just like top three top five and it's really hard to to do and i don't really know exactly the recipe it comes from the heart if i care it does yeah so what what years have you won uh 15 in yeah. Uh, andorra yeah S 17 in cairns yeah 18 19 22 that's so gnarly dude sick <laughs> it's sick <laughs> like five five times that you yeah that you've been able to just get in and all different different tracks different yeah. places different footy everything like circumstances context situations uh, conditions I don't know do you like do you enjoy the feeling like yeah. do you do you know when it starts to kind of happen and you and like do you because it must feel different to live in that skin and to like live in that moment and do you almost feel like it it starts building and then you just like let it happen you don't have to like think about it happening or no i don't think about it for sure like it it does it does its magic alone let's say but i don't i also don't realize it mm. i only realize it when it's finished you know which will be harder if you do realize it the day before that's what i was wondering like because sometimes like you'll be riding right because i think for me the appeal of riding to me and this is actually why i love jiu-jitsu so much jiu-jitsu this happens instantly every time no matter what my voice in my head my like oh you're doing this good or you're doing this bad or like not there is nothing like especially when i do jiu-jitsu it's, it's so instant i think it's because it's like a fight you know like you it triggers like that fight or flight response and, and for me i just i'm i'm like it locks me right in but on a moto like i don't i don't notice it when i do jiu-jitsu it's like when i'm home in the shower or whatever thinking about my training session then i like go back i'm like oh that's sick i was gone like you start thinking about it and you realize you weren't there almost like you were doing it but like you weren't doing it yeah and but it's sort of like i'm so used to it it happens every time but on a moto it doesn't happen that often for me like very very rarely like i have to so like the other day for example i was doing a i was doing a 20 minute moto and i started to get tired and i started making a lot of mistakes and then i got the voice in my head like all right you're getting sketchy you're gonna crash maybe you should pull off or and like that voice is there and then you're like you're trying to like talk to you go oh man you got this like you're pepping yourself up but it's like the magical stuff is when you don't have that voice there's no pep talks there's no talking up there's no talking down there's no doubt there's no confidence there's no nothing it's just you're just doing what you're doing mm -hmm. so is that kind of like the i feel that i feel when you say that i feel it fully and because also every time I won the, the world championships, it was a different story yeah. leading into it. I think that's what prevented me from trying to feel the same as the year before or whatever. And most of the time I just live every day without thinking so much, trying to like optimize the training, but also enjoy the fans, enjoy my friends or my, or my family that came to see me spend time with the team you know just do the normal things that makes me happy and then at the end of the weekend i just realized that wow that thing i did not necessarily on purpose actually helped me so much to sleep well that night or to feel good about myself because of that section i don't know and you're right like when you can just be like free from that voice that kind of make you fight a little bit with yourself then it's it's really really good but it's so difficult like it doesn't happen every day yeah and when i ride moto <laughs> i have the voice all the time yeah because yeah, i don't yeah. know what i'm doing <laughs> yeah but when i at certain races i just know it's now but i'm going 
I'm going for it the same way as always, but the leading into it make me even more confident and more uh, sure of the fact that I can ride this way. Yeah. You know, if that makes sense? Yeah. I feel like we go super far now. Yeah. But <laughs> no, no, no. But it's like, it's something that I have a mental preparator, like preparation, the coach. Yeah. For like seven years, blah, blah, blah. And you always try to get close to the zone and stuff, but it's so, it's not something you can touch. It's yeah. never, you cannot replicate the steps to get to it it's impossible yeah. yeah because it's always different but when you are in it you kind of have the feeling yeah you don't you don't realize you're in it but you act like you're in it and then when it's done you know you were you were in the zone yeah yeah you, know? yeah. Like, you ever had uh you ever had like deja vu yeah for sure it kind of the way that you just described that then kind of almost feels like deja vu in a way like i had deja vu the other day for the first time oh, is deja vu is a french word right yeah what does it mean in french deja means already yeah and view viewed. means seen yeah already yeah, seen yeah huh so yeah i had deja vu the other day and uh and i was in it and i knew i was in it but i like it was uh, such a weird place to like be in. Like what you're describing, it almost sounds like deja vu. Okay. I don't know what that. I don't know what deja vu is actually. Have you never had it? I've had it, but I don't know where it comes from. No, nah, me neither. Like I don't know if it's if it's actually from the same reality or if it's from another dimension or if it's from someone traveling time and you know. You know? It's the weirdest feeling, yeah. eh? Because it feels so real in the I moment. Know. Yeah, and you like, and you, you for a moment you you like you freeze and you're like, okay, wait a minute, yeah. why this <laughs> yeah, feels yeah, so yeah. familiar? Yeah. It's like it doesn't have any explications. Like if someone knows, please let let you know like why. Yeah, I'm curious. But I don't. I actually don't think anyone knows what it is. But I think that there's something similar when you said like that zone that you're in. It's like you sort of you're almost you know that you're in it, but you don't know that you're in it, and you just yeah, kinda, and you just do things as they come and it works yeah you know and it and you keep on bum no doubt no like second thought no hesitation and it just like it just flows and i feel like it comes also from the build up i couldn't do that run from leger like the last year world champs i can do it once with yeah. this specific build up if i had to go back imagine there's red flag on the last turn i had to redo the whole run I can probably not do it again because uh. it's all like a whole build up into that and that's it so what's the process then like obviously it's this it's different every time it's a different track it's like you can't try and make the same feeling but like what is do you have like a specific process like a way you want to do practice runs away or is yeah. it just the same as normal but the intensity is so much more because like you said you have this like extra heart that goes into it yeah it's just like it's pretty much the same as always but for example we always have a custom paint frame custom yeah. kit custom helmet like you can feel the spe specialness of the event a little bit with all that small attentions plus the people that come they also care more about the race because it's world champs. Yeah. Yo, be world champion. No, it's like and world champion. And the flags champion. on your back. Yeah. It's not just the race. It's like the title at the end of it. And all that energy just comes into a big pile of vibes that makes me a little bit more uh, professional. And I don't know. It's just like when I'm in the gate... I prepared, I thought about this moment for months before and I trained, suffered a little bit thinking about that and then I just realized that it's now. Like all that for now. Yeah. And it's massive pressure because you're like, <gasps> what if I fuck up? All that for nothing. But at the same time, it's so exciting and so strong. Yeah. Then I kind of, I'm able to use that as a strength more than a like be passive of the pressure you know yeah because that was literally going to be my next question is that there's like this build up in your mind and that means so much more and there's there's so much extra on top of it that that then 
to me i'm like fuck that that's gross get me out of here like <laughs> <laughs> like i want to hide like leave me alone but it's there's a saying there's this motocross racer from australia josh casey was a wild motherfucker and uh he had this saying that he used to say that i use fucking every time someone says the word pressure is that pressure makes diamonds baby oh and yeah it's, it's so true you know it it's like true. how do you how do you feel about that pressure it's something that is used as a positive because so the feeling of anxiety right so if you if you take the word anxiety away that's not in your mind anymore and then you close your eyes and feel the feelings you get like kind of tingly your heart rate goes up a bit your breathing gets a bit shorter that would be like the physical signs of anxiety and now you talk about excitement and you take the word away of excitement and you feel the feelings and it's like your body goes a bit tingly your heart rate comes up like so excitement and anxiety it's the same thing it's, but it's the label that you put on it and i feel like pressure kind of has that same duality yeah but i feel also like in french at least anxiety has a different meaning okay like it's close but it's not as negative uh. anxiety can be positive like because if you're an anxious about something you will actually ask yourself some questions about that thing and if you're smart enough you can find something to put against that to like to answer your problem yeah then anxiety don't become negative huh. you know yeah and excitement also goes with that because then if that's uh not a problem not a problem no problem you feel ready mm. like you know and that, that feeling of like have you ever felt like ready for something like actually yes that's insane yes and that's so and that makes you like yeah okay yeah okay. Yeah, yeah yeah you know and that all goes together i think huh no <laughs> no 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 yeah there's been one yeah one i had like a it was like a national jiu-jitsu championship and i was like just amateur you know small shit but for me it was like a big deal because i'm like fighting someone i like flew there to do it it was like a fucking big whole thing and i was so fucking nervous the night before there was great like i would i visualized the way that i won like i had three matches or four matches and i did the same thing to every dude no way. and i like visual i was in a float tank then like the week before it and i visual like i i was so like it sounds retarded because i'm talking no. to like a fucking five-time world champ no, it's the same. but it was like to me it was that you know that was my version of it you know but i remember like i remember being there in the morning and i wish i had this feeling with motocross in my life because that was the thing i cared the most about <laughs> racing but I remember being there and be like, man, I'd be like stoked for someone that could beat me because like, Whoa. good luck, dude. <laughs> like, cause I was like, that's how like ready that I yeah. felt, you know, where I was like, if someone can beat me, I actually wouldn't be mad at them or I wouldn't feel any type of way because like, that's mega, man. I've thought about this shit and I've like, it was such a big deal to me at the time, you know? Yeah. And see, like you say, world championship, whatever, it's the same. Yeah. Except... I'm doing it at my for my job at the highest level or you're doing it for your for fun or for your own self at the smaller level or whatever but it's the same thing that you're feeling feeling yeah in the gate like you're like fuck now I can I'm gonna try because I think I'm ready yeah and that feeling is uh is also why we train so hard and test so hard because then you get this feeling of you trying everything to be ready yeah because if you don't test all winter you don't like Bust sweat your ass. yeah then you in the gate you feel like a sausage yeah. and you're not ready you know it's yeah. like but well, then you're gonna go but uh, yeah. but if you're a fucking weapon yeah the pressure is on because you've been doing all that for this moment but at least you feel like you can do it yeah and some people might not need that but I do yeah and some people also don't prepare so well so that they have an excuse yeah yeah so they don't put too much pressure so they can do it and if it goes yeah if it doesn't go well uh, it's, yeah, it's because i had uh yeah, i didn't train so well yeah it's that's, crazy huh? that's not a place to be though hey there's a lot of people that do that yeah but i understand it's kind of nice not to put maximum amount of pressure 
Yeah. But at the same time, you never really fully know what you can do. Yeah. So where did all this come from in you, do you think? Because you're a wise motherfucker for your age. <laughs> I don't know. I think I was, I was lucky enough that I met some nice people and then I was well surrounded. So I always had like good debriefs and good people trying to guide me th- towards not being the biggest retard <laughs> you know, which is so easy to do very possible yeah yeah and then <laughs> I'm living proof <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know like everything like breakups it everything that goes in your life can be used as a the, lesson and yeah I I have so much more to learn to be better and stuff but on some stuff I am actually proud of being this advanced in experience and stuff yeah yeah yeah. and i'm not so good at using experience sometimes i need like you i think more like lessons or more times a fail to actually like okay now i get it well i think it's like it's it's about accepting yeah maybe maybe you don't accept then it's it's you've got the knowledge yeah but you don't accept that that's the way that it is. True. It's almost like you're fighting against reality. That is true. You're man. like fighting against what's real. You know that it's real, but there's still a part of you because I think surrender is like the most powerful thing. And when you can surrender to the thing that you've learned, surrender to the experience that you've had in your life. Like, dude, I've made the same mistakes so many fucking times. And I still, there's so much shit I still do today that I, like booking my flights last minute. (laughs) Like, I know I shouldn't do it. And I have that experience and I have that knowledge. But like, that's, that's almost me holding on to the way I wish the world was yeah, yeah, <laughs> instead of accepting yeah. that the world is better when you just book your fucking flights early <laughs> <laughs> no but I fully relate to what you just said it's true I think it makes full sense and sometimes breakups you don't want to accept it you're like fuck no Yeah. then you will do the same mistake or text her again or you know because you don't accept it but the best thing you can do is yeah. see the reality and and welcome that and be like that's the way it is that's that those are the facts yeah. let's deal with that yeah but it's yeah, impossible yeah. like if it was that easy it would be boring but yeah i'm the same as you man yeah that's the that's i think the big the biggest part of growing up but i think that's the i think that's the big part of like when they say like relationships is sacrifice yeah like i think that's when dude sometimes I have to listen to my chick like because she changed jiu-jitsu with me right so it's 30 minutes to drive home from the gym and every fucking <laughs> every fuck I've just had wars like I've just had the fucking shit beat out of me okay by like three big black belts and I've just like I've been fight like I've got fucking like the skin on my hands that's from like fabric like that's how hard that I'm like pushing against somebody's fucking clothes and it like rips the skin off my hand and I'm like my heart rate's still in the car for like 15 minutes of the way home is at like 170 <laughs> beats per minute no way. and I have to listen to my chick to just tell me the most bullshit stories about <laughs> what happened to fucking training I wish the world was another way yeah. <laughs> I wish there was a world where she didn't talk but you know you the have entire to, fucking yeah. time you know you have to listen and that's because it's the way it works and yeah. then it's, you accept it okay yeah yeah you so there's think? surrender you know yeah. you just have to surrender to the way that the world is like the world it's beautiful that, and it's uh, it sounds so like weird but it's that accepting those things that the world isn't the way that you want it in that moment and then there's been and it's the same with like the stuff that we used to fight about earlier in our relationship that i just like don't fight about anymore and we had like a thing the other day where i was like almost just gonna like snap and just like fucking just blow up you know and i didn't it was like a, there was like a split second where I was like I could have gone either way and I was just like I accepted that this is the way that the world was right now and then five minutes later I that, like it was a great outcome you know it was yeah, just like yeah. she's like oh I'm sorry I was fucking being retarded and I was like ah oh, me too like and you I was kind of like glad that I didn't 
be a fucking dickhead yeah that made a fight go for two hours that like just didn't need to be there at all you know but that also comes from experience and yeah dealing with it in the past then. exactly and That's you good. and you learn from those things that caused you the problems in the past but yeah i just think that there is like such a power in like that surrender you know yeah i still work on this but I think Hopefully. it's a process for yeah. everyone. And it's never ending. Like, there's yeah. always new things. But it's cool because more and more, and at least in downhill mountain biking, the mental side is becoming super important. Yeah. Then everybody work on it, and then it's t- it took another dimension too. Yeah. And it makes the sport tighter because everybody is better. Yeah. And, for example, in moto, like Supercross, you don't really hear much about mental guys or yeah that was gonna be like my next question was it like so seven years you've been working with a mental coach i'm actually like right now a little bit out of turn i feel like i learned a lot and i've done because everybody has a different approach right and i feel like i need to see another side now another dimension of the mental coaching yeah but i've been learning so much in those seven years and um and i was one of the first ones saying yeah i have a mental guy mental coach psychologist yeah and everybody was ah yeah i wanted to maybe and then they did and they oh it's so nice because i actually can talk there's some things i talk with him that i would not talk to my parents or you know it's like personal that you can you don't feel so good about or, or, you know yeah and then it helps you in your writing and your relationships and everything and for me it's it's actually so normal and i'm surprised if someone at a high level or even everybody should almost have someone like that to speak to you know not a friend that yeah, yeah knows yeah. your boyfriend or you know yeah, your girlfriend yeah, or, yeah. You know? but someone like random that you pay that listen to your bullshit and then <laughs> actually helps you with it and then you just say goodbye and to you, i'm gonna work on it see you next time yeah you know that's super cool and in motocross there must be but i don't know so much well i think that there's a big part of that where people would see it as weakness like people would be worried that it would be perceived as oh, weakness yeah. so like you just don't give a fuck you were just like yeah this is what i do i see this i get benefit but i mean was there people that were like oh Brittany's a head case he needs to see a <laughs> mental he needs to see a mental coach like th- i think that's what my people- dad really yeah, yeah. <laughs> my dad was like what the fuck do you need this guy for <laughs> i was like well actually there's some things i can i'm struggling with that's why i'm so inconsistent when it's raining i can't deal with it i still can't actually but (laughs) (laughs) like and you couldn't understand that i needed that and i was like i told him something super mean but it actually got him thinking i was like maybe i told him maybe if you'd had one you'd had have one you'd be better or you had you would have been a better motor guy or better mountain biker because there's probably issues with you and you didn't know yeah and he was like actually uh, okay then he started to think about yeah. maybe some issues he had I don't know and he started to accept the mental coach because at first he was not even talking to him and he was like fuck off well he there was probably like as a father he probably thought that oh, yeah. he should well he probably thought that he was letting you down by yeah. by not being because as a father I could I could imagine that you would want to be there for your kids and you would want to be seen as like or able to have the answers to your kids problems so like he probably thought that there was it made him less of a father in a sense that maybe he couldn't help you with your problems I don't know if it was that I don't think it was that I just thought it was more like his old ways of thinking Mm. that was close minded about this being a weakness yeah instead of this being an opportunity of getting better yeah and then now he actually like my physical coach also got his diploma or whatever and then they are closer so they talk a little bit more about it let's say and he actually is curious about it now yeah well five years ago it was just he wouldn't even want to hear about it so it's really interesting because he actually was against it because of those reasons because he's from Moto, my dad. Yeah. And then now he's like, act, even if he's 60, he actually sees also the, even the benefits for him. Yeah. Even though he's not going to be winning or making a career now. Yeah. 
But if you're smart enough to do it when you're young, then you you're just winning time. Yeah. Because the because you can use it for your whole yeah, life. Yeah, and the mistakes you don't make thanks to that, they makes you better quicker. Yeah. What have been some of the biggest things you've learned from him? Deep question. Uh, I think I just what he helped me a lot with was the where other people were looking at me and what other people thought about me that I cared so much before mm. and that I don't really anymore. That's like a weight being lifted off your shoulders, huh? Yeah, and it's it's such a an influence that can be negative to your life because you don't do things for you. Yeah. And then in the end, I just, I had injuries because I couldn't say no and I didn't want to be a dick to those people. Like, and he was like, okay, this winter we're going to work only on people's opinion of yourself. Yeah. And then it was quite simple when he was talking about it and then when I was talking I, I could feel like I was I had some I don't know if it was from my childhood or whatever maybe a little bit actually from my parents who didn't really believe I could make a living out of it so yeah. I always had to prove them yeah. I was good or I can do things but in the end I was just like fuck those people are not owning the truth it, they just have their education their belief their things Yeah, they think this I leave it on the side. I need my people opinion to be to be right. So my trainer, my manager, my mechanic, my friends, my yeah. close friends. And then if I had this that was kind of fitting with what I felt like or what I wanted, I could I couldn't care less about the other ones, you yeah. know. Well, my first year was like I was expecting expecting the photographers because one time he told me, "Wow, you look so fast, bro. You can win tomorrow. Try, try, try." good luck blah, blah, and I was like I crashed the day after <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it was because of that but then I would expect the guys on the side of the track to tell me that I was looking good mm. you know and sometimes I wouldn't get it so I would push harder to get yeah. it to get yeah. that little s- s- sentence that makes me feel good about myself and then now I just need my people's sentence to be like okay man you're going good you ready do it Yeah. or not it's not your day go for top 5 yeah. it's okay you know Mm. you can't you can't uh control the way other people well, i guess you can to a point in like how you act and the way that you carry yourself but ultimately people that aren't like involved with you that aren't like you said in that inner circle you really just can't control how they see you or view you so then it's a kind of a trap then to let that influence the way that you act because you're just at the whim of of these people that you know you have like you've got no control over what they think and how they and it, but but that can have such a big impact on you but at the same time what I was trying to get out of this social media was bringing this fully back into your life mm. into my life posting to get some people to follow you to think you're cool yeah to think you're interesting and then posting more and then saying funny things or not you know like then it's all like super difficult to navigate like in the correct way there's well, no correct way what's the signal and what's the noise kind of thing it's super hard to identify when to do what or when it's wrong or when it's good but I the more I go like I took a friend to do my Instagram yeah because I wanted to a little bit step at least one foot away from it I still do some stories because sometimes I want to say some shit or whatever but I really yeah I, I'm figuring out I how long know. ago did you do that like step out of the Instagram uh, stuff 2018 okay so at the end of 18 it's a good move I don't know I think so like I'm I'm happy with it I deleted the app off my phone really yeah so you have it on, your, on your I, computer I do it on my computer because of DMs ah, I yeah. do like how that's how we've set this up yeah. you know what I mean so like to me losing DMs would be like really hard uh, but yeah I just the app I just can't I just found myself like 
just comparing my life like just, and just and, and relationships too man it's so bad like just to have girls constantly coming up on your explore feed <laughs> yeah. like it's fucking not cool That's like when you think struggle. about it bro yeah because then like every chick that you the chick that you're with you're always comparing to oh she's got fucking oh man no boobs is like no tits is so fucking hot like no tits and big ass oh tan skin oh super fair skin brown hair blonde hair curly hair thick hair like it's there's every shape and size and every variety of like woman and style and clothing and attitude and, and tattoos then, no, and yeah. then you've got just this one chick that doesn't change ever <laughs> yeah. like it's it fully fucking cooks you man yeah and then it knows exactly what girls you like and then yeah. it just keeps on more and more yeah. and like what yeah. the hell yeah but it's it's yeah instagram and stuff it's it's also so good for you yeah it's for crazy me. good yeah like people know videos like i've been to colombia they see what i've done like you know it's like yeah. the way it works and for you like i watch most of your things on on instagram yeah like i actually did realize i didn't follow you yeah <laughs> i followed you like but you don't have it anymore like yeah. jason michael Pin. yeah yeah no well, it's on the yeah i just never use it now and then i didn't follow gypsy tail so i was like oh shit is it the see that i follow now but you still uh but you still but I've saw, seen, like, many, you still saw yeah, it yeah, yeah i've seen like i've listened to some stuff like mainly moto yeah but it's so good for what we do yeah at the same time but then it's super hard not to mix everything and just spend an hour on it like yeah. me yeah I had to set up a limit on my. I like, did that too before because that, I was yeah. wasting time. Yeah, and it's and you actually don't do anything productive on it. Yeah, but it's good for yeah. No, no, I know, I know what you mean. <laughs> I just got to the point where I just had to fucking clip it. It was yeah. just and even it was just stupid shit. Like I'd be I'm now I'm in an apartment that's got an elevator, and like so now not in my apartment. Like ah, okay, now okay. I'm like in an apartment building that has an elevator, okay, not my okay. apartment. <laughs> yeah, we living good. Um, but yeah, like you press the button and you open up your phone and you're on Instagram, and it's just like it's those. They were the little moments that were really getting to me, where I yeah. could like notice or like me and my chick we're just at home and like we're both on our phone, and I was like, I just don't know that I want this. Yeah, like for my life you know there is not a moment anymore if you don't have your phone that you're not on your phone if, as soon as you're bored yeah that like can't you, be good yeah even at the red light bro yeah I'm at the red light you know I'm like what the fuck yeah and then it just yeah it goes us really addicted we're in bad shape so you you then just pass that off to your friend and yeah. then that, that made a big difference like I tried well. to have him plan the the post like deal with some of the requests from the DMs yeah. and also like download videos on it YouTube same yeah things like this and then he always asked me if I want to put the caption so most of the time I do the caption yeah, because yeah, I kind of yeah. want to be authentic but I don't really do much Yeah, I don't like it. Sometimes it could be a week. I don't even think about posting. Yeah, I'm a bit of a spectator of Instagram. You yeah, know? yeah. And at the end of the day, if we were at the Red Bull Summit thing, and they there's a guy from TikTok that comes to present <laughs> what ah, heavy yeah what <laughs> tools we have to use and and it's amazing. Like it's a good opportunity for us to learn about the app and stuff. But I don't want in the end, like deep down, I don't want to. You don't push want to blow people. up on TikTok. Yeah, they want to push people to waste their fucking time watching shit from me or anything else. <laughs> you know, I'm like, don't do it. It's shit. <laughs> and then your brand, your sponsor that pay you want you to do that, but you don't want to do it. Like, it's really like, eh, it's a bit of a tough uh, mix, but I do a little bit because I have to, yeah. but it's not good for anyone. But with that being said, we do want people to listen to this podcast. I just realized how fucking late it was. Yeah. We got a ride in the morning. What time is it? 11.50. 50? Fuck, time went quick. I have an hour to have, drive home. Fuck. Just crash here if you want. No, oh, I, you have gotta, the, uh, I have the motor shit at I home. I should have told you to just fucking bring it. Nah, it's all good. Um, like Bruni, thank you, brother. Thanks, man. It was good to catch up a little bit. You're a great And dude. it's uh, really uh, honored for me to be part of your podcast, bro. 
I've wanted you to do this for a long time. Sick. So it's glad we could make it work. Yeah. It was kind of hectic though. We almost didn't make it work, but yeah, we did. Let's do it again sometime. I would love for you to do it in the studio one day, like actually all set up. And I'll go to Dubai one day. Yeah, that'd be sick. Have you been over there much? No. Oh, dude, we'll ride for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Let's go when it's not so hot, dude. No, yeah, I'm only there when it's not so hot. Very perfect. <laughs> Thanks, bro. You're welcome. We are excited to announce the launch of our new membership site, gypsytales.com, packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125, Gypsy Gang.